Holy shit, it's Hi. been a while. It has. Hey everybody, you're listening to The Ungrown Ups. I'm Matthew, and across from me is Ryan. That's me. <laughs> I didn't know if you were going to try Oh in. no. And this is episode 88, also known as the... 88th episode. And when we hit 88, shit's going to get crazy. We're going back in time. We are actually going to go back in time because it's yeah. been about a month since we've been. sat down in front of the microphones. And so it's been longer than that. It has been. Has but it? I think it's. I don't know. You were out of the country. I was for he, a significant amount of time. And I think you came back and then I left. Yeah, I came back right before thanks or uh, that right Halloween. before Halloween. Yeah, yeah, Halloween. And then I left on November 4th. Yeah. And then I've been out of the country and out of town until yesterday afternoon. So it's been three weeks since I've been out and you were out for what, two weeks? Yeah, basically. So basically it's okay. So it's been five weeks or so since we've last, which is fine. I guess, you know, stuff can percolate and brew. Yeah. You look the same. I thank God. (laughs) I don't know. Is that a good thing or bad? I don't know. Were you hoping for better? I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't, you're not shirtless rubbed in baby oil. So I guess that's okay. That's only a Saturday activity. Yeah, I know. That's the downside of doing this on a Sunday. Right. You don't get to see it, but 88 episodes. Yeah. 88. It's been a while. But it's funny. It's 88 over how many years now? Four. Something like that. It's been a while. So we don't really do a lot. No, because ideally we'd be doing what? 26 episodes a year every two, every other week. Yeah. And clearly we're averaging about 20. Yeah. We're not doing that good. And, but during the pandemic, we were doing it like every week. Right. So for a while, we were kind of ahead of pace. And yeah. And then we, we backed off and thought, you know, that and it'd be okay. Backed off even further. Yeah. Which is fine. <laughs> but I think the, the hard thing too, right, is like life just, it still happens. Oh, yeah. And a lot of stuff just gets planned. And I think, you know, without my life, especially if it's not on the calendar, I probably don't know what's happening. Are you, are you big on putting stuff into your phone calendar just to keep? tabs on things as reminders and stuff? I do. Yeah. And it, and it's everything from like haircut to, oh, yeah. yeah, I put everything in there. Same thing. In there. I have all my doctor's appointments on there. Like next Saturday, I'm going to the optometrist. I got Ooh. that on there. And then it's also like, okay, Grayson gets out of school early on these days. Yeah. So that's on the calendar. Yeah. Uh, Any of the shared event stuff that the house needs to know goes on there. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise, I don't know. Yeah. And the, and the funny thing is, is like, uh, Jeanette and I finally upgraded. We finally got the, uh, iPhone 15s. Ooh. Uh, Right before I went to Japan. So this is three weeks ago. Would you ago. get a pro? Yeah. Jen and right. I both got the i15 Pro. The, so pro she, the, the baby pro. Yeah, not the Pro Max. Not the Pro Max, like this bad boy. Yeah, I, I wear pants that have normal size pockets, and I don't need a huge thing. I wear thing pants my... with normal pockets. What does that mean? But you, are you a front pocket carrier with that yeah. thing or a back pocket? Yeah. Right, left front. Yeah, that's where mine is, too. Usually but... left front, sometimes back left. Yeah, so I just got the regular Pro. Okay, but I also have two phones. Oh, you got the, the work phone and yeah. the personal phone? Yeah. So the one thing that was interesting, because I, I did not upgrade to iOS 17 uh, prior to getting Oh, you phone. waited. I waited. Cause okay. I, I always wait till point one. Sure. To download it, because by then all the bug fixes are kind of well, out. Well, you hope so, but yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And so I saw that there was some like battery consumption issues with older phones upgrading to iOS 17, where yes. you, you kind of chew through battery life. Yeah. So I waited. But in getting the new phone and getting with the new iOS 17, uh, seeing the new features. And the reason why this all came up is because way back in the day, there wasn't really a way to share a calendar. So I created a Google calendar that my wife and I both had access to. Right. But now with the, uh, you can set up a family. You can? Yes. And so. Oh, I didn't know that. I set that up when Grayson got his first phone. Um, So there's a family. So Grayson and I were set up for about a year. And then when Jeanette finally got the new phone, yeah. I set her up. So now all three of us are on the same family, which means that we can share the same subscription. But you can also share passwords, oh, which is kind of cool, too. So if like Netflix, you know, we yeah, have yeah. one password and whenever I change it, it just she, changes. Right. But then she has access to it when she goes to passwords on her phone. Right, right. She can see the updated oh, that's pretty Netflix cool. password. Yeah, that's so, cool. So there's some added convenience. But the biggest difference is <clears throat> the calendar thing. I can get rid of of the external Google calendar that we've had for years and just use the common iPhone calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can tag things as uh, events for her, events for me, events for the family or oh, that's whatever. that's pretty cool. I did not know that was a feature. It I is. like, I mean, I, I like the action button. I like all the new features of the phone. I the have, phone itself is really light. I have not used the action Mine's button Mine's set up to camera. 
Okay. Oh, I guess I could do that. Because I use the camera constantly. So do I. And for the dogs. But I always just swipe up and then hit camera. Or from the lock screen hit camera. But I like that idea is using yeah. that as the action button. Yeah. The one thing that amused me the most is I've got a ton of pictures of Pepper, our, our boss and Terry. Yeah, yeah. You can now... Um, Oh, you, it'll identify the dog. Yes, it'll yeah, yeah. actually identify the the breed of right. the dog, but the the there's filters and it has people, pets, and places. Yeah, I saw that. And so I've got a, a pepper uh, gallery. So when I click on pepper, all the pictures that it's detected my dog is in that album. Yeah, that's pr- super cool. But the cool thing is, is like there's there's pets and plant detection. In iOS 17. So you take pictures of stuff, you'll get uh, on the bottom of the photo, like when you're looking at it in the uh, photo mode, I guess. Yeah. There's a little eye with a little circle and some stars around it, and it'll tell you additional information. And so I I was up in Big Bear for Thanksgiving this past weekend, Mm. and there were trees in the shot. And when I hit the the info button, it would tell me information about the plants. I haven't even noticed that. Like, I've noticed a lot of stuff. Yeah. But not that. There are some. It's 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 interesting, kind of the 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 shenanigans that has been incorporated. I don't know how useful it's going to be. You don't really have to use then the uh, Google anymore. Right, right. Because I mean, how many times have you gone? What is that? Now you can just take a picture of it, and then if the phone recognizes it, it'll tell you what it is. Yeah, I'll use the Google app. All right. Yeah. Uh, sometimes for like trees and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. So like, well. here's a tree, and you can see that that little icon down there. It's got the little star yeah, around it. All right. So I I click on it, and it says, "Look up plants." And then, what? and then it'll give me uh, results. And so the tree that I took a picture of is a California incense cedar. Obviously. And then it gives you thumbnail examples of the cedar tree. And you're like, yeah, that's it. Did you have to turn that on? Because mine nope. don't do that. It just it depends on whether or not it detects it. I so see. I guess it depends on how you, you capture it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. And it has a little leaf. Yep. And you oh, click on it. That's cool. Yeah, look up plant. And then you click on that, and it'll tell you, oh, it's a thorn, or it's Continue. a rose bush, or... Results. Marijuana. This is a lime. Is it? I don't know. That's what it says. Well, I don't and know. And or I... silver linden. Okay, because I don't know how accurate it is. Because it'd be yeah. funny as hell if you take a picture of it. No, it's not marijuana. Everything is marijuana. It'd be funny if it was like, uh, I can't identify this because that picture was taken in Seoul. Oh. No, it's, it was a picture from Seoul. It seemed to work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think it was geolo... Geo I would hope not. Base. It'd be weird unless the Koreans are really protective of their plant types. But it would be kind of funny to just like an, on April 20th just have everything is weed. You mm-hmm. take a picture of anything, it's marijuana. It's weed, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> or like in December, every every tree you take a picture of is a Douglas fir Christmas tree. Speaking of weed, I saw a guy that looked like Cheech yesterday. Are you sure it wasn't? Yeah, I'm 99.9% Did sure. Did I tell you I, I met... Cheech and Chong at the airport in Reno a couple yeah, years back. Yeah, so weird. It was kind of rad. I mean, it's cool. They were performing, but I don't know if it was just because it was Reno and maybe they don't have a first class lounge, but they were just hanging out at the gate with us folk. Yeah. And uh, of course, I was the only one that recognized them, which I don't know how That's that weird. happened. Or I was the only one brave enough to actually talk to them. Yeah, maybe. But uh, got to chit chat with them. That's cool, cool dudes. Yeah, this was not, definitely was not him. He's driving an Audi e-tron. The white one, it was weird because I was sitting there charging the car and he got out of his car, inspected yeah. the charger. Your charger? My charger. To make sure that it was up to his expectations? I don't know what he was doing. Checking how long I was going to be there, how long I'd been there. what the I don't know. He's reading the info off of it, which it's weird. I would never go to somebody's gas pump. No, but I guess if you're sitting there and you're trying to figure out, am I going to Well, he had waiting? just pulled up. Yeah, so maybe and he's trying to get a sense, am I going to wait 15 minutes or am I going to wait... An hour and maybe, minutes. but he's sitting like so. He parked almost blocking me in because the way that's one charger I was at, you do have to park a little funky. So he parked blocking me in in a regular spot, almost blocking me in a regular spot. Two other cars left, and he didn't go use those chargers. He just waited for me to leave. Is yours the fast one? No, it was just one of the normal. Well, they're all fast ones at this place, but okay. it was still like a weird. Is your charging door the same spot as his charging door, so he can mm. pull in and easily connect? No, but the way the chargers are at this station, they're staggered. So you, every other one, like if you don't want to back in and you really, you, pull in, yeah. you could pull in if you were lazy, but it was just bizarre. And then this is where the guy with the, there's a guy with the Rivian yeah. that unplugged and plugged right back in knowing there was a line. Yeah, but maybe. He had been sitting there when I got there. Right. So then he unplugs. You see him go through all the stuff on his phone and then plugs back in and starts it again. Maybe he, it wasn't charging fast enough and he wanted to restart the session 
Because I've had issues like that before, like yeah, plug in and like it's going slow. Eh, I don't know. This guy seemed like he, he looked like he would be a jerk. Well, I I, I told you yesterday, you, you're you guys are all assholes for when you no own false. An, when you own an EV false and you own a residence that could accommodate a home charging setup, but you refuse to install one and instead just overload the public charging network. I for me, I only charge the thing like I only really need to charge it. Every couple of weeks. Oh, I know. But so I don't care. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal for you because no. you, your drive is practically... Well, you charge at work, right? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. But it's like, I will charge at work, but, you know, we went to the LA Auto Show on uh, on. Where did you Wednesday. charge there? I did. not My okay. point is, like, I needed to charge because we went up there. Oh. Um, which, by the way, the LA Auto Show was so sad. Yeah, I uh, I was supposed to go. And I bought tickets to go on the on the on the media press days. Yeah, I couldn't get media tickets. I also had to be in the office, which was a bummer. And then I couldn't get out of it. And then the so you didn't go. I didn't go, but I had to pay seventy five dollars for a ticket that I couldn't use, what? and they wouldn't refund. Even though like I I booked the tickets, and then like not even a week later, you I get tickets at work. <clears throat> no. Oh, because, weird. because not every company was exhibiting so it was like there's a lot of companies that weren't there mm. so just to attend you yeah that's true but even the press days you, you had to you know pay and it was part of that automobility bullshit like they yeah. i don't know if they're trying to rebrand it kind of like the the tokyo uh motor show has been rebranded as the tokyo mobility yeah show. well because nobody's going well, when they're trying to do a little bit more. So right. at, at the LA Auto Show, all the space that would have been other exhibitors were like indoor test drives of EVs yes. and things like and that. that. But the they way were it was test rides. Yeah. Test rides. They did have the <clears throat> Honda Moto Compacto. Yes. Which that little was, briefcase. Yeah, and they had a little course set up, and of course I turned it into a competition. As you should. Yeah, as as you should. Uh it was and I won, just so that everybody knows. So as part of that whole Moto Compacto thing, do they show you how to fold it up and unfold it, or is it just given to you? No, ready to it's ride? already ready to go. And there's like there is one you can pick up and see it folded up, but so apparently a lot of the dealers don't want to deal with them. Yeah, my buddy Tom has tried to order two, and his orders keep getting canceled. Oh, so, and a they don't want to deal with them, and b they realize they can charge a markup probably. No, they can't. Well, what, what was happening is the, the <clears throat> websites were fucking it up because when dealer. I guess the way the because I, I looked into this. Okay. When there's new part incoming for because it's it's being sold it's through the Honda number. accessory, yeah. 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 And so the Honda accessory part system, like the the websites, um, when a part comes in and there's no price assigned, it automatically jacks a price up to something absurd. Sure. To kind of catch your eye so that you yeah. would adjust the price as a retailer, yeah, as, which as makes the sense. parts department or whatever. But a lot of those moto uh, compactos or whatever are being sold for. Uh, something like two grand. I mean, twice. Oh, really? You know, like they I were like, I looked it up as eleven hundred landed. Yeah, and to my door. Yeah, because I think they're nine ninety nine plus yeah, tax, plus tax and shipping. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so that's the normal price. But some of them, some uh, people were going online to buy them and thought that the dealers were marking them up to try to rip them off. Oh, I see. But it was just the default setting of the the parts page. Yeah. Well, he ordered it. He had it all processed, and the dealer itself canceled his order. So a couple dealers, like there's dealers yeah. that are doing that to people, which is really stupid. That is kind of a dick um, move. Yeah, it's a dick move. But the I did look them up on eBay, yeah. and if you really, really want one, you can get one for about twenty five hundred dollars. That's stupid. Which is stupid. It's it, it was a, a little fun blast to ride in the little track thing that they had, but I would not pay my own money for it. Well, so a thousand bucks for an e bike isn't terrible. It's not really an e bike, but it's not really an e bike. Right. It's got tiny scooter wheels oh they're really small yeah and it's kind of sketchy i mean yeah if people don't <laughs> there were a lot of people that probably shouldn't have been on it realistically oh i'm sure later. there's a weight limit it's gonna um, be like what oh yeah i see what you're saying yeah, yeah yeah no i just mean people that don't have the ability to balance oh yeah. yeah there were a couple people that were like paddling their way around the corners so sort of related to this yeah. um speaking of i guess e-mobility when I was in Japan, I kept seeing this um, these scooters or these bikes in a little taped off section, like on the sidewalk or off to the side with this sign that said loop, but it was L-U-U-P. Like a rental scooter thing? Yes. Okay. And so kind of like the bird scooters. Yeah, yeah, sure. But Jap Japan being very Japanese, you couldn't just pick up the scooter off the sidewalk randomly and return it somewhere random. You had to pick it up from a very specific location that was marked off okay. with this... Uh, striped uh, barrier, you know, on the ground. Yeah. 
Which makes sense. And you had to return it to another one of those striped off spots only if they had available space. So Then what do you do if he doesn't? You have to drop it off somewhere else. Oh, geez. And so I, I saw, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then loop, okay, so I look in the app store. So I'm in Japan. Of course, I'm still on the U.S. app store. Yeah. And sure as shit, it's in the U.S. Oh. app store. So I download the app. Yeah, did you try it? Oh, yeah. I jumped through the hoops, and you had to prove that you were 16 years old. How and do so you do that? So you had to uh, scan your driver's license or your passport. Oh, okay. I went to scan my driver's license, but the app is meant for Japanese licenses where the photo is on the right side Uh and my photo is on the left side. So it wouldn't scan any of my data. So I had to then scan my passport, which it then recognized. Yeah. I guess apparently. Passports are uh, standardized. Yes. Yeah. And so I was able to verify that I was 16 years old or older, and I'm just barely over that threshold, at least maturity wise. Exactly. (laughs) But the crazy thing was, is I had to actually take a driver's test. I had to uh, watch these these little clips, and they I had to read through a couple of pages, and then take an eleven question quiz. Really? And I had to get a perfect score in order to pass. To Meanwhile, then, here you can go buy a thousand horsepower car with no quiz. Right. And so I did all, huh. all that stuff, and then it, I was then uh, accepted as a loop rider. Wow! Rider. So I jumped through all those hoops. So now you can loop it up. Right. And so then the next day, I'm like, all right, I gotta go do this. And so we had... Were you nervous? Only in the fact that, one, I've never done the e-mobility thing in the U.S. Yeah, I haven't either. Two, you're not really supposed to ride on the sidewalk in Japan. So you get to ride in traffic in Japan, which... What? Kind of makes it even crazier. Yeah, that's... And, <laughs> and so I um, I got to the uh, the train station after work one day, and I was going to meet up with some buddies for, for dinner. Uh-huh. And... I was like, you know what? I don't want to take a cab over there. I'm going to see if I can find one of these loop things. So I fire up the app, and I look, and there's one like a block away in front of the grocery store. Okay. So I go over to there. I um, There's a QR code on the handlebar. You scan it. You keep the app open. It unlocks the um, the 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 bike. In yeah. this case, I did a bike the first time. Oh, okay. And it's Pedal a, bike. It's a pedal bike okay. with e-assist. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So yeah. once you start pedaling, you feel it go, but there's no throttle. It's just right. all pedal-based. And so I rode... Uh, 2.7 kilometers in like 20 something minutes and the first ride was free uh-huh. and uh, it was actually pretty fun so I, I'm first one's free kid yeah yeah and so uh, I'm in traffic riding and so I'm on the along the curb you know riding right uh, doing this and then <clears throat> as part of that driver training thing it says like well you can ride on the sidewalk if you're going certain like very slowly and and even though you're not supposed to, everybody else is riding their bikes on the sidewalk. So I'm right. like, well, fuck it. Traffic's getting kind of crazy or sketchy. I'm going to get up on the sidewalk, especially when crossing bridges. because Yeah, it all seems sketchy. Like on, on, on city streets, there's enough of a shoulder in some spots where it's, it's all right. But yeah. on the bridge, it's kind of narrow. There's not really much of a shoulder. Then you've got the curb there uh, or the sidewalk. So I just, I'd just i hop on the sidewalk and ride over across the bridge and get back over. Right. So my, my first ride, I survived. All right, this is cool. Then the next day, it's raining. I'm like, ah, oh, I want to do it again. So the subsequent day, all right, I'm going to get the scooter to get breakfast. So you did it in the rain? No, no, it was dry the next oh, morning. Oh, got it, okay, like, yeah. It had yeah. rained all day Friday. Got and then, it, okay. Or no, it rained all day Thursday. And then Friday morning, the rain had, had stopped. Yeah. So the ground was wet, but it was dry. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I fire up the app looking for where I wanted to find my scooter they didn't have one anywhere near me. So I, I walked to breakfast, uh-huh. which was a good 20 minute walk, but there was a scooter right there that I picked up and I rode back to the hotel. And that, that's the weird thing with the, the the rental is you have to pick your return spot. You can change it once you've picked it, yeah. but you have to have a destination in the app. Oh, interesting. And um, I wonder why. They want to make sure, I guess, the parking is reserved for you. So okay. if I pick a destination, it'll know that, hey... Somebody's coming. Right. Got it, okay. So n- nobody else can park there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was very Japanese in the fact that, like, you know, in, like, Tokyo, for example, you can't own a car unless you can prove you have a parking spot for right. it. Right. And so it's kind of the same idea with the scooter rental or the e-bike rentals. Yeah, you can't rent it unless you, you can park You can't rent it. it unless you know you have a spot to park Yeah, it. yeah. So I walked to breakfast. I went to a place called Wild Man Bagel. And <laughs> okay. The name intrigued me, and too, it was like, I've never had a bagel in Japan, so yeah. let's go do that. How was that? Pretty damn good. Really? It was actually really tasty. It's Interesting. A, it's a small little spot. Like I, I walk up, and there's just a counter with a display case right. and a register. There's no 
seating indoor or outdoors it's like oh get your stuff and leave get your stuff and leave sure and so of course me being the american i got, I got no place to go so i'm just walking around eating, eating a, bagel. a bagel yeah that's all right but between the two the scooter is way sketchier and i think it's just because of the fact that the tires are so much smaller mm-hmm. uh they don't cushion the impact as much with the bike you have a pneumatic maybe like a, a 15 inch tire with the scooter you've got a six inch wheel so it just seems like a much harsher yeah. ride and then on some of the sections of road, there was like kind of a cobblestone uh-huh. on the road or on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. Much rougher on the scooter than it was on the bike. So I think if I was to go back and do it again, if I was going to do the loop thing, the bike is the way to go. Well, I mean, you're an authorized rider now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, you I, didn't even have to have an international driver license. Which I did have for this yeah. trip. And so now I, I've kept the app. I mean, I think the next time I go back to Japan, I'm going to do it again. Huh. It, I mean, the rental, after I paid for it, it's 200 yen for 30 minutes. That's cheap. So at a couple existing bucks. conversion rates, it's like about a buck 50, a buck yeah, 60. Yeah, it's really cheap. For a 30 minute ride compared to like a taxi ride, right. which would have been like 15 bucks. I was actually amazed at how uh, inexpensive the taxis were in Korea. Oh yeah, so that's one of the things that we mentioned. We, we were gone for a while. So yeah. Ryan was in Korea yeah. for work a week two weeks well t- so it ten was days? like 10 days basically okay. all all in and then i yeah. was in japan for two weeks after right. you came back yeah 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 korea was awesome man i uh, you know okay another country knocked off my list did you get um, to go to the dmz no that would have been interesting but we were in no i was in seoul i was in busan i was in seosan we were like uh, kind of all over the country How to be fu- honest i have so so completely okay. ignorant, the way but i understand seoul, it okay is so Seoul's in the north. It's about an hour, I think, of away from the border, hour and a half. Okay. But the entire, and I might get this wrong, so I'm sorry, but we're going with this. Korea, South Korea is the size of Utah. Okay. Basically. Not very big. No, yeah. not at all. And there's like 50 million people or something like oh, that. Oh, shit. It's, there's a lot of people, most of them in and around Seoul. And okay. then you have a couple other big cities. So like... Uh, where we were, if like Seoul's here, we Ryan's went to Busan. Holding up his hand, I am his holding my, like a mitten. Yes. Um, and explaining where some stuff is. Yeah, yeah, basically. But like we went to Busan and then we were over in Seosan. But so he points to his <clears> pinky <throat> and then moved over to his thumb. Over to my thumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, it is. Uh, it was. It was awesome though. So this trip. How'd you get uh, around? Like those cities to cities. Are you on a bullet train? Are you just flying? Some around? train, some bus, okay. some. Multi- yeah, I mean, kind of everything. But so I got there at about five ish by the time i went through uh, customs customs everything's about five in the morning i had it's an hour and a half from the airport to i was staying in gangham okay which is you know that side yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, that thing. right now we know jacob is singing along yeah jacob's stuff. he's got a, a side fetish yeah yeah it's weird i was gonna say crush but i think fetish yeah, is more accurate that seems more appropriate yeah uh so anyway so i uh get picked up in a long wheel based g90 executive like yeah, yeah you know the korean version of a mybach was the guy standing outside with like an ipad he, with your name on it or like piece a, of paper, a piece of paper with my name on it yeah, yeah spelled correctly absolutely had my name did not speak english uh what? so he was just like come with me and i was like okay but he said that in english no he just oh he just gestured yeah, I was okay. like, oh that's me and he's like okay and he took my bag and he's flying dude he's like practically running i'm like why are we in a rush yeah it's sunday morning is he parked on the curb like in the no he's zone? in a regular spot i don't know what the deal was but anyway so we get out and i i don't know what i was expecting maybe an ionic five or something yeah right? just like a transportation normal car yeah and and i go home like oh which car is it and he's putting my bags in the back of this g90 and i'm like that can't be right that's too nice yeah. <laughs> that's not for me but you know like in germany like the s classes are just that's a e class is a german taxi it's no big deal yeah this is a big deal this was like the full executive seat with the lay, yeah, yeah you know, lay back and everything. And yeah, and I touch screen in the back seat. I was playing with everything. The guy was probably so annoyed, but I ended up like with the the seat. So there's a button you can hit, and the the seat in front of you, the passenger seat, goes all the way forward and tilts forward, and yeah. then a little tray pops up, and then your footrest comes up. So you have a total footrest all the way across. Oh no way! Oh, it's awesome. So I was like, and I could see out and see yeah. everything going around. Um, so then I got there, obviously too early to check into the hotel. So I took and checked my bags in. Um, I kept my backpack, but checked everything else in. And then I just hoofed it. I looked around. I was like, what do I want to do? Um, called home. I talked to yeah. some folks at home. And it's a 16-hour difference, so that's a little weird. That's about what it is, I think, from Japan to the I think it's the a li- I think it's like a little bit less. But 
Either with, way, with it's a decent savings, amount. It was 17 hours. Okay. So maybe it's pretty, it's a, it's a long amount yeah. of time. So anyways, so, uh, I, I was like, okay, what's around here? Uh, you know, obviously I don't know anything in the area. I walked through the mall. I did grab, I did look at the McDonald's. Um, but I, there it's weird. You have to order on a kiosk and part of it's in English and part of it's not. Yeah. So it's really confusing. I, I, I experienced that same thing in Japan. Like I usually I order at the counter because there's, yeah. there's a laminated menu. You right. can just, point you can see it. what it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, even this, like the pictures of the food, that part's easy, but like, what of these says coffees? What of these is drinks? What button am I supposed to press to check out? That was confusing. The other thing is, is like the kiosk really encourages like electronic payment. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I've got a pocket full of yen. I want to use cash. Oh. So that's why I kept going to the cash register. This is the first country I've had zero cash On that purpose? I've ever been to in my life. No, I just didn't need it. Oh, Apple I didn't know Pay, somebody Apple told Pay you. Apple works for everything. So i am got a trip coming up next April to a country that I've never been to before. And I've heard that it's entirely electronic payment based. Which one's that? I'm going to China. Oh. I'm going to the Beijing Motor Show. Okay. And I was told that- When is that? April, like oh, end of April. Okay, sure. And I was told you don't need cash. It's literally all electronic. And I was like, huh. And so I figured, okay, Apple Pay. But then I was like, well, no, the Chinese don't like Apple. So is it like, Baidu pay or whatever, you know, the Chinese yeah, yeah. payment I don't know. Platform of choices. But then it's like, okay, but, but your cards are all tapped too. Right. So So then it's like, okay, I gotta figure that out. But I think my flight has me changing planes in Korea. So I'll also get to go to Korea for oh, the first cool. time. Yeah, that's neat. I don't know if I have any sort of a layover. But I don't I, know. I would hope that I would have a an hour or two to run around a Korean airport just the to airport say I did. It's a bummer. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I was hoping it was going to be some no. like crazy futuristic weird. No, it's nice, but like, okay, I'll, I'll get to that. Okay, okay, okay. So, so uh, I get to the hotel, drop off my stuff, and you went um, to the mall. I did cruise through the mall really quick. It, everything was mostly closed, but I just like interesting because oh, okay. my hotel's right next to a mall. Okay. It was next to the Starfield Mall. That which, sounds very American. Yeah, there's an aquarium. There's uh, the, um, oh, you can look this up, and I post pictures, but there's a library. Um, it's called shit. I don't remember what it's oh, called. I've seen pictures of it. Yes. Yeah, it's that real famous. It's an Instagrammable library thing. That's that's in the middle of the mall, and it is rad. It's the Starfield Library. It's literally it like bookshelves, like floor to ceiling, and yeah. it's like curved walls and, and it, bookshelves. But it's very and... like spaceshipy. Yes, like it looks like you were in a library on a spaceship. So, anyways, that was really cool. But I walked to um, it's called Jansil Park, and that was where the 1988 Olympics occurred. Okay. So I walked around all that, saw the baseball stadium. Oh no like, way. It was really cool to get to see all of that. Walked. Excuse me, from there to what's called Olympic Park, which is another who knows how far, but it's like where the newer Olympic stuff is. Okay. Right. So that was the newer Olympics. There's also this weird art museum that I went to and walked around that whole area. And then, um, and this is all before like 10 a.m. This is a uh, approaching lunch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I did all that and then I'm kind of standing there. There was a, a huge Korean pop festival going on that yes, you I wasn't sent me pictures and there was huge crowds the lines were insane like and i'd never heard of any of the people i wasn't going to go but it was it was interesting they were queued up so that was a big thing um and then they had some so you walking around and you're yeah. with, in t-shirt and shorts yeah so yeah. you've got your your tattoos out yeah you getting any looks or are, they, are you no big deal like are you just um, I w people are looking, but you could tell they're trying not to stare. Right. Yeah. So y there were not a lot of people walking around with tattoos at all. Yeah. That's, that's the thing that I, I find fascinating. Yeah. And knowing that, so I guess tattoos are still illegal in Korea. And so oh. there are tattoo places, but they're definitely a book ahead, go through a process thing. And I didn't really look into it, which if I go back, I should try to do that, which would be pretty cool. But so yeah, it's about if noon. You, if you don't know Ryan, Ryan likes to get tattoos as travel souvenirs. I try to. He tries to. Yeah. It doesn't always work out. No, you're about like what, 30, 40% of the time? Probably, yeah. 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 But the, uh, <laughs> so I, I was standing there in the park and I had this interesting like, I don't know what you would call it. The park's huge, by the way, the Olympic Park. Well, I can it's, imagine. It's beautiful because yeah. it's not just the Olympic facilities. There's like a huge open area and like hiking and like, it was really cool. This big like lake. And this is downtown. Yeah. Like yeah, you yeah. got high rises all around yep. you. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. And so was, was, uh, anyways, was doing that. And then these, there were these guys that were just juggling these okay. two guys. They're just hanging out juggling. And one guy like jokingly holds out the juggling balls to me. I'm like, eh, sure. So I juggled with two random dudes in Korea. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know, you know, now I can juggle, but he didn't know until he picked up the balls. No, I, I knew. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cause that'd be awesome. Yeah, like, that'd oh, be even funnier. Shit. Oh, I just learned a skill. Uh, no, so 
that was cool. And then I walked over to what they call like the, I, somebody said it's kind of like a food alley. Like there's all oh, yeah, these, yeah. all this back road and there's just a ton of like restaurants and stuff. Yeah. Those are some of the best dining spots wherever you go. Yes. Yeah. Well, I wandered into one. Yeah. Because I don't really know what anything. I'm like, yeah, sure. No, I'm going yeah. here. And I order, the woman spoke English, which was cool. She was an older lady, spoke English. That's what I was going to ask. Like how. Not very many people spoke English. Even the kid, like younger people. But like when I'm when I'm in Japan, yeah. even at the train stations, there's enough signs in English that I know where like no. things are or what stop I'm going to or the name of the destination. There's it's a weird mix and what I found interesting was between Apple Maps, Google Maps and then you I had two native uh South Korean, Korean maps. Yeah. I could get around, okay. but none of them were good enough on their own. Oh. And like the Korean one was hard because it was in Korean. Oh, clearly. Right? Yeah. So you're like trying to find something. Like, ah, it's really frustrating. Um, but anyway, so I wander into this place and I ordered, I was like, that's kind of, looks kind of expensive. It was like $40 or something for lunch. Yeah. It was, it had to be for two people. <laughs> this thing was, this platter was massive yeah. and it had all the sides. It had two different kinds of pork. It had, I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. And I ate all the beef or all the pork. Right. But it was like, it came out and I was like, what the, and the lady like didn't say anything. She just, I don't know. She probably just thinks, oh, you're American. You're yeah. Fat American. Fat American. This, yeah. yeah. But it was, it was awesome. And so I had that and the, um, ended up grabbing a taxi. So one I was telling you this earlier too, is that you fire up Uber and it converts on its own to what's called UT, which and is that's the Korean the Uber ta- basically, but it's really just taxis. So it yeah. calls a normal taxi instead of Uber where you call some random person. I think they're starting to do that in New York. I think Which is great. They're pairing up because that totally makes sense. Because yeah. I mean, that, that's the biggest benefit of the Uber app is the fact that you can actually get a taxi cab come to you, come to you, right. and they already know where you're going. So yep. any sort of language barrier is taken care of, <laughs> and <laughs> yes. it's paid for in the app. So like that was the worst thing about dealing with taxis like in New York was either you'd get a, a driver that's English comprehension was pretty shitty. Yeah. Or they would do that. Oh, sorry. No credit card scam, which or, is bullshit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you're like, fuck. Yeah. And that's why, and I never have cash here. Yeah. Like I have 20, I have a $20 bill in my wallet and that's weird. Yeah. Right. I just never have cash. So anyways, grabbed a taxi, took that to what's called um, the soul tower, which is this big tower on a hill. Um, and it's, it's actually really cool. So you take a cable car, well, you can walk, but it's super steep. So I took a cable car up to the tower. To the um, base of the tower? Yeah. Okay. And that was like, I don't know, 10 bucks, something like that. So you take the cable car and they have a, a two way option. I just got the one way. And then it's another like $12 or something to go up in the tower and you get this huge view of. All Is it of, a rotating platform? Or you just no, walk you just around? walk around. It's a big circle. So you, you know, that was really cool. And Is then it like the, the space needle? Like, is it just kind some of, yeah, weird? Yeah. I think it's a, a radio tower or something. Okay, because so, some of these, like, landmarks are, are like office TV buildings. Tower. Yeah. yeah. No, and, this and is just And they have floors like a, all the way up. Others are just like, there's nothing for the first hundred floors. No, there's nothing like, until the top. Okay. And there's a restaurant and a few yeah. other things up there. Um, but it was cool. It had a really good view. The base of the tower is a really cool, like, they do, like, cultural demonstrations and events and things like that. And so there's far, entertainment. So you had to take the cab there. So this is the cab was probably like 20 minutes, I guess. So it's a, it's a ways from, Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, to walk would have been a couple hours probably. Yeah. Um, and I had already walked like, yeah. you know, 11 miles or something. So did that, went up there, checked it out, um, sent some postcards from the tower, which is cool. You can buy postcards oh. and post them straight from there. Nice. Send postcards to can't say I got one. No, nieces and nephews. Sorry, no. buddy. All right. Uh, sent them to the kids, sent one home, and then um, had a beer and just kind of hung out and looked out over everything. And it's cool because you like it. It's, you know, it's one of those things they show you like, oh, this is Los Angeles in this direction. This, <laughs> this, right? so you're like, oh, I'm taking a picture of home. Yeah. Uh, so that was really cool. And then watched this like. Now, when you're out and about, how many non, like, how many white people did you run into, basically? I mean, how many uh, non Koreans did you come across? Yeah. There were a lot of like Japanese, a lot of people from China. Okay. Um, a lot of, yeah, pretty decent amount of Westerners. A lot of folks that were, hmm, like Indian, like a lot of people from everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And like when I was walking around the park, it was pretty, pretty funny. A lot of, I saw a decent amount of dogs. All right. Every single dog had on a piece of clothing. Yeah. yeah. Every dog I saw all day. Was it even cold? It was no, not really. I mean, I was in. I took my jacket off. It was warm enough. But every, dude, there were people were bundled up. It was really funny. And so, at the um, tower, 
I kept seeing people with National Geographic branded backpacks and sweaters yeah. and like shoes. Okay. I was like, that's weird. That's yeah. super weird. So, because National Geographic is like a U.S. thing, it's like what's well, a, a magazine, right? Right. So I was really f- found that kind of weird, and I'll I'll tell you why that's weird or what I found out later. But so went to the tower, went back to, ended up taxi back to the hotel, got some you know some stuff, got my room, whatever. The room was beautiful, <laughs> way too nice for me, <laughs> gorgeous room. Uh, and then I went back out to find something to eat and wander around a little bit more. All told, I walked about fifteen miles that day. And, but so what I ended up finding out is National Geographic and Kodak are licensed as just brands. Oh. So they have in Korea, National Geographic is like a huge clothing brand. No way. Yeah. Same thing with Kodak. And they're just licensed. Yeah. So it has nothing to do necessarily with National Geographic other than they've licensed the name. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird. There was a Kodak store in a mall I went to. Oh, no way. Yeah. It was bizarre. So. The rest of the week was all work stuff. Like the Monday was solid meetings. Yeah. Um, but we did have a, like we went to dinner. I got invited out to dinner. We went to Chinese food, which as far as I could tell is just Korean barbecue with a Chinese flair, I suppose. Okay. Uh, it was lamb. It was so good. All of the food that week was amazing. And then the rest of the trip was more like being at camp because <laughs> activities it was all activities and like we went to a cultural place and got dressed up and we went to like this you know like a village yeah. and we did like all these other things and we traveled around so it was very much like it was it was getting steeped in the culture it's like a guided more than tour. anything else yeah. it was really cool i hate guided tours though no this was amazing yeah this was so much fun but and I, we did that makes well, sense is it like a level setting like experts you know experience like getting yeah. everybody on the same page well what's cool about it is it wasn't done through an agency. This was all done in-house. Okay. Which so it was actual sense. employees. Yeah. yeah. But we got to do a whole ton of stuff. And then we went to... Because I've never done a guided tour. And I, I refuse to. Like any of those like... No, some of them are fun. If you're in Europe and stuff and you do one of those walking tours, you learn a lot of stuff. A walking tour is fine. But I'm talking yeah. about those ones where it's like a multi-city. Oh, no, 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 no. Know, yeah, 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 yeah. And you're stuck with the same group of people and you're... <laughs> I get it. I mean, that could be okay, depending on the group. But what was cool is just all the random stuff. And then we went to Hyundai has like a a theme park, for lack of a better term. Really? Like open to the public? Yeah. yeah. So it's this huge building. And there's like all the cars on the floor when you walk in. It's gorgeous, too. Indoors? All, indoors. Okay. All the cars on the floor. They've got like all these displays that show you how the cars are built and they're interactive. So you like pick a thing and then it like this whole robot does a thing, whatever oh, no they have exhibits. They had a WRC ride, like a, those motion simulators. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 But it was cool. However, I found that Hyundai makes a car called the Casper. Ooh, it is a little K car size thing. Yeah. It's cute as shit. Do they have K cars in Korea? Like that this segment is kind of it. Yeah. 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 Um, Cause like in the U S if you're unfamiliar or not in the U S in Japan, most standard size cars, like cars that could be on the same roads here in the U.S., have a white license plate. Yeah. But a K car is a car that specifically has a smaller footprint and has an engine smaller than uh, two thirds of a liter, or 660 cc's. Yeah, these are. This was a one liter. And they have yeah. a yellow license plate, and so right. you can tell typically by the size, but also by the plate whether or not it's a K car. And the, the smaller car, it's less powerful, less footprint, but it's also got a lot lower taxes. Right. So people use those in the city. But I didn't realize Korea would have yeah, it's sort just of a, similar. I don't know that there's the same reasons for right. it. But they have but, a smaller footprint yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and this little thing, man, out of every single car on that showroom floor, I was like, this is, I just kept going to sit in it. I was like, I need <laughs> one of these. This is the coolest little thing ever. How long have they been made for? Uh, this generation just came out. Oh, so it's like all new. Yeah, all new. And what's cool is like all the little details to it, like the back door has a little happy face on it, <laughs> but it's not cheesy. No. It's like, it's adorable. It's a one liter uh-huh. and it comes with, you ready for this? You can get an optional one liter turbo. Dude. So it's got like 97 PS. That's not bad. No. I mean, the Miata is what, 80 something horsepower? Like yeah. The first gen Miata? Yeah. Like the 1.6 liter? It was fan freaking tastic. So I Is it, did I they want do it, like uh, test drives? No, because in, in but we did go to I went to the Hyundai Kia uh, Genesis proving ground. Well, they have like a, a experience center, much like PEC. Yeah, I did go to that, and we did get to drive there. Because like in Tokyo, Toyota used to have uh, the Toyota City. 
Well, they still have that, but in Odaiba, they had the the MegaWeb Mall facility, and they also had yeah, that's what I'm talking a, about a um like a, a facility where you could learn all about Toyota vehicles and stuff. But they Is also that had not there test drives. Yeah, they got the the museum or the whatever you call it, theme park yeah, in that, Odaiba. That's gone. I, yeah, from my understanding, because I, I I would go there specifically just for the museum, right? Because they had a pretty good car collection of like American cars, Italian cars. That all went away. Oh, interesting. I don't know if the test drive facility and that other park is sure. a separate yeah, yeah. part of that experience. Yeah. I don't know if that's still there, but I, I haven't been to Odaiba in a couple of years. So you I need to go back and then go. I wonder if the Gundam's still there. Yeah, that's that's, that's still, still there. there, but they changed it out to one that moves now. Oh, okay. It doesn't walk yet, but it's got yeah, it's motion close. to it, which is it's getting closer and closer. Yeah, the unicorn was the last one, and that had the transformation head and stuff on yeah. it. But yeah, anyways. Uh, but it was cool. The the proving ground was really cool. It did uh, I don't know. I mean, it was I. I was speeding technically. Yes. Uh, but I was doing a one forty on the oval, which isn't too bad. Miles or kilometers? Miles. Okay. Yeah, miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. Yeah. This uh this last trip to Japan was my first time driving on public roads in an actual vehicle. Well, I take that back. In a vehicle that wasn't a go kart. Yeah, yeah, right. Because I've done uh, Mario Kart. Yeah, the Mario Kart before it was sued to oblivion and had to change its name. I, I did that in um, Osaka, and that was a that was a few hours because it was like a group drive yeah, that's a and tour. You stop. It's a tour. Yeah, but that was the only time I've actually driven on public streets. I've driven in Japan a bunch of times, but usually on private property or on a test track yeah, or something yeah. like that. Not, it's funny. That's the same. I've never like both Korea and Japan. I've only ever driven on a yeah, Test or private. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so driving on public roads is actually kind of fun. And uh, the one thing that was disappointing, though, is like getting on the expressways in Japan, the speed limits, at least on the section I was on, was kind of artificially low. Like the speed limit was 60 kilometers an hour. Oof. And then I'm like, what is it normally? And they're like, oh, it's about 100. Yeah. And uh, even that's low. Even that is, yeah, low considering, you know, California highway right. speeds or Autobahn speeds you've yeah. driven in Germany. But driving in Japan was actually a whole bunch of fun. The The hardest part of any right-hand drive experience is keeping... Not turning the wipers on? Right. <laughs> which, which was yeah. made harder because here in the U.S., the wipers are on the right side of the uh -huh. steering wheel and the turn signal indicator is on the left side of the steering wheel, yeah. the, the stock. You know why that is. So your hand... You, you're not taking your hand off the wheel yeah, yeah. to shift gears and you can still so do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so for manual gearboxes. But yeah. the crazy thing was is not when when you go to countries where they're right-hand drive, typically those stocks switch, switch positions. But we were driving a bunch of different cars in different from different automakers. Only the Japanese brands switched positions. Really? Any of the non-Japanese cars yeah. kept the the wiper and turn signal stocks the same as it was in the u.s i drove an audi though that was backwards i drove an audi that wasn't that's so weird and then i, I drove some other brands that weren't and yeah. that was what made it more confusing because yeah, yeah, yeah. usually you're, you're freaked out about activating the wipers when you don't when you don't want to they just didn't want to make a new clock spring you know i don't know what it, either that or the the those automakers figured the volume wasn't big enough to justify the cost of a different part yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and so they just kept it as is and yeah. so i drove six different cars uh -huh. and only i think two of them or three of them were japanese and so only those had the the windshield wiper stock and the turn signal indicator stock that's funny because i drove a right hand drive audi that it was switched yeah that's so weird yeah the audi i drove wasn't and then the other brands weren't and so huh. it was it was that was the the only fun part and we kept a uh an audible tally every time somebody fucked up we were like three <laughs> four nice. yeah the other, the other thing I've found in right-hand drive cars is for the first couple times I go to shift, I punch the door panel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or I can't figure out where the mirror is. Yeah. The rearview mirror, right? Because it's over your, it's to your left, and not to your the, right. That's the thing that also tripped me out. It's like when I sit in a left-hand drive car, the rearview mirror looks like it's at a pretty extreme. No, no. It, well, for, on a left-hand drive car, it's pretty flat. But when in oh, a right-hand drive yeah, car, yeah, 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 it's at a crazy wonky yeah. angle, and I don't understand why. Swapping seats changes the angle so dramatically. I'll bet you it's not really that different. I think it's maybe just the way you perceive it. Maybe, but I mean, I've sat passenger side in a bunch yeah, of cars. and they are weird. Yeah. And, and it's not that bad. And so it's just way more extreme. And so I don't know why that is. Yeah, I don't know. That is weird. Huh. 
but I yeah, it, it was fun to actually put my international driver's license to use. I, I almost always carried one with me just on the off chance because yeah. I needed one to go go-karting in Osaka. Yep. And then it's like, you never know if you're going to go on public roads. So I'm like, okay, I'll have it with me. And they're only good for a year. Yeah, I've had to have one. I mean, I've been to, the only place I haven't taken one is to Europe. And I've driven, they don't care in Europe. They don't really care. I mean, and honestly, all the international driver's license does is translate your information into one of 26 different languages yep. of countries that support or, or recognize it's the a international NAF, driver's license. It's a NATO thing. Yeah. yeah. But like China's not a part of it. No. And so for this upcoming Beijing auto show, um, I have to drive. But in order to drive in China, you actually have to take a test and it's a written test, but it's a hundred questions out of a possible thousand question pool. And Jesus. I've heard the questions are kind of confusing as it is in Chinese. Yeah, yeah. And then they're auto translated into English, you know, using probably some AI right. translator. So then it gets even worse, even worse. Nice. And you have to have, I think, like a 90 percent or better. How often can you take the test? Like if you fail, can, when can you, you take it again? I think you can take multiple times, even in that one session or oh, whatever. Um, but I need to start prepping for my yeah. Chinese drive. But I'm hoping I get a, a card or something that says I have a Chinese driver's license. It'd be rad if you don't. It'd be even better. That's so much work for nothing. For nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking it'd be rad if I get carded just to hand yeah. over a Chinese driver's license. Or it'll be license. a sticker. Oh, yeah. It could yeah. be maybe a sticker of my passport yeah, or something. Maybe. The, that is pretty cool, actually. I didn't think about that. Like, I've had to have international driver's license. So South America had to have it. Yeah. Japan, Korea. I've never had to show it to anybody. Um, I did, actually. The go-kart place just wanted to make sure I had one, but I didn't even have to open it to show that I was in it. Oh, I no, they the took booklet. my. They took in. They took the one in Korea, and they opened it and wrote down the number and everything. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, which I thought was really weird. Yeah, what are they going to do with your... They didn't ask number. for my regular license. Yeah, and all that is is the translation of your regular license. Yeah, yeah. I think the cover has some sort of number on it that's just some serialized Yeah, thing. it's just a whatever book, and then it says AAA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And your shitty picture. <laughs> They're never good, but that, that was interesting. The, so the, the proving ground thing was pretty rad actually. Um, unfortunately didn't get to drive some of the cars that I would like to have driven. That Were was, they not available or they, just, it, it just wasn't time. part of the program, oh. um, yeah, but it was, it was over still, there. T- <laughs> it's the place is so nice. And then right by the airport, actually BMW has a similar oh, it's um, a proving ground or drive. driving experience thing. Yeah. yeah. So Did you was, see a, a fair amount of BMWs on the road out there? Or is it pretty much just all Korean cars and then a smattering of No, Germans? there was a lot of different random stuff. Um, and then, like, you know, there were some Peugeots. There were some, uh, some German sharing, cars. There were there was a lot of actual random stuff. You were sharing pictures of random American cars. Yeah. there I saw a couple Chevy Colorados. Yeah. I saw an F-150. Um, apparently, the Colorado is actually an Asian-built version that's smaller. But uh, I couldn't tell the difference. Oh. Um, I saw a Buick. I saw, <laughs> oh God, what was that super shitty Chevy that I saw? Um, a Malibu. Oh, actually, I saw multiple Malibus. Like rental? Or you think it's like military? I think it's somebody that owns it and they just don't know any better. Oh, man. And they're a normal left hand drive country. I know so. there, there is like that, what was it, the um, Daewoo Chevy tie up for a couple of years. So I know there yeah. was some cross licensing and, and stuff like that. But there was a, I think when Hyundai first started, it was. Ford, but I mean, can you time? imagine saving up all? Because they your built money? the Cortina. Yes, and the and yeah. the Ford Aspire was a Kia something or other that was right. rebranded. Yeah, and that was a shitty car. My, oh, their cars are bad. My my buddy growing up, uh, his girlfriend Annie had a Ford Aspire. Okay, and it was a, a shit box. And um, of course, you know, any car getting into an accident with a deer is going to get a you know damaged. But this car was obliterated. Um, when it encountered a, a deer. Yeah. This was also the worst jet lag I've ever had coming back. Yeah. I was fine there, but it took me about a week to recover. So Dave, um, our, our buddy Dave, has has complained about that same thing. He says, as he's gotten older, That's jet lag much. has become more challenging for yeah. him. And for me, I came back from Japan. Then the next day I left for Big Bear for Thanksgiving and I had no problem. I came back on a Saturday and you didn't feel right till the following week? Yeah, at least. Like I, I didn't even go into the office basically all week. Did you do you try napping or what was No, I just felt like crap. Like I just was groggy and couldn't get like un my sleep was all fucked up. I'm more knocking than on wood. Yeah. That I, can, I won't have that problem because Yeah, I mean I, I don't wish that on you at all because it sucks. Yeah. And then the 
Um, and it was hard because Halloween was a few days later after I got back and we had a Halloween party. Yeah. And that so, does make it hard. yeah, it was like, hey, I'm here, but it was, it was fine. Yeah. The, the most that I've, I've ever had a, a challenge of travel is usually when I go somewhere and it's typically the second day adjusting to the time zone. Yeah. So like Europe or yeah. in Japan or wherever that second day, I just usually end up being a little sluggish and then have a headache. And that's about it. Yeah. And then after that second day, I'm fine. On the return, I haven't had a problem. I think because we were, like, I was doing stuff so, like, so much stuff that was like, hey, we need to meet at this time and this yeah. time. Yeah, you don't have a chance bad. to. I, well, I didn't have a chance to get off. And because I got there so early, I just made it a day. That helped, that, right? Yeah. So I didn't go to sleep until, like, 11 o'clock that night. So you were tired. and Yeah, and that, that really helped. I mean, I was exhausted because the plane flight was brutal. Um Oh man! What Coach airline is did you fly? Worst. I ended up on Delta, which really sucked. I won't do that again. Oh, so it was um, actually a Delta. Yeah, yeah. I didn't it know was it was terrible. a code share. No, it was terrible. Who's the uh, Korean code There's share? Korean Air. Is it Korean Air? Okay. Yeah. Because I was um, going to ask, what are Korean flight attendants or what's Korean airline food like? But no, I, I'm going to have to find out next time I go. Because so you flew back miserable. on Delta as well. Yeah. And it was a thing where, you know, this, every company's got their, oh, these are our parameters for your flight and whatever. And I should have just booked a different. The other thing I would like to have done was stayed a, another day. So my flight on uh, Saturday, I came back. I left there on Saturday and uh, my flight was at like four or five o'clock, something like that. So I had enough time to hang out in the morning and some other folks were there and we, we hung out a little bit. And then I went back to the Starfield Mall and I happened to be. I got all my I got my bags at the the hotel because I was gonna have to go catch a bus, which is also at the mall, the bus station. <laughs> <laughs> that mall seems like everything. <clears throat> yeah, basically. Was there a train station there too? No, nope, no. Nope. In fact, I didn't take the train once. The oh. train was very confusing. I downloaded the app for the train, couldn't figure it out. Like, absolutely couldn't figure it out. So just didn't even bother. And I didn't have a train card, so I wasn't oh. gonna go get one. Um, so, anyways, so. Um, going through the mall to meet up with some folks to check out they were at like the nike store or something and by the way the prices weren't great nikes were basically the same price so it was interesting some stuff was a pretty decent bargain and other stuff, other was, stuff was just like literally normal yeah like a pair of nikes was 70 bucks and is, you would pay 70 here for the same pair that's yeah. what i'm saying like one to one they were saying so anyways walking through the mall and i happened to see a swatch store that i didn't see before and as we've talked about, the moon swatch is impossible to get. Nobody's yeah. freaking got them. And so I wandered in and lo and behold, they've got a moon swatch. Moon swatch. Do they have the full selection? No, they had uh, five or six of them. Out of, out of seven of or nine? Nine or whatever it is. Maybe. One for each planet. And plus, uh, plus the moon. Yeah. So anyways, uh, they had it and I bought it. It was a decent deal, especially without the taxes and everything. And uh, was stoked. So I've got... The, my speedy pro and i have the omega swatch did you wear it home no it's in the box i haven't even taken it out oh really yeah but you planning on flipping it or something or no no no. i just it, i got home and threw it in the safe i just oh. haven't bothered yet but what's funny i was coming in uh back in the states and i you know declare whatever the yeah. oh, do you bring thing i was like oh i have a watch it's you know a couple hundred bucks and she goes, oh, what is it? And I told her, it's a moon swatch. She goes, really? And I like, yeah, I had to go all the way to Korea. I was joking, you know, to yeah. get one. And she's like, what do you mean? And I explained, like, how they're really hard to get here. And she's like, yeah. that is so rad. Like, she was so excited. She was just as excited as I was about That's it. That's kind of cool. cool. I, yeah, I, that was pretty neat. I always say the worst part of any sort of international travel is flying back through LAX and dealing with customs or an immigration there. I flew back through San Francisco. Oh, so maybe that's why you got friendly people. Maybe. I've never had a problem at LA. They're just so indifferent. They could give a shit, yeah. and then they, they seemed annoyed that you're there. It's like going to the DMV. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's their yeah. job, but they're pissed off that there's people there that I, actually have to they have to deal with. Yeah, I also don't... I Just customs in general, I don't love it. And I, I feel like the rules constantly change. For sure. And so usually you go through immigration, and then there's that bag check, you yeah. know, going through customs. This time, it was all closed. You just walk through. So the guy that probably had like 27 birds saran wrapped to his legs right. could just walk right through. I've never I've never bought anything that was worth declaring anyways. Well, yeah, yeah. But on this trip, you got your swatch. Mm -hmm. I got myself a, a G-Shock. You did. We both got watches. We both got watches on this trip. And this was something that the watch had just come out. And I wasn't even really thinking about it. But when I saw it in the stores, I was like, all right, it's kind of rad. It's, it's a, a G-Shock steel. So they have... A watch style that kind of the 
the informal street no- name is the Cassie Oak because it looks like a very expensive Royal Oak watch because of the hexagon face. Oh, I see. Okay. And so it started off as a hundred dollar resin watch. Um, and then they've made one with a, a metal bezel with the resin strap. This one is all metal and the all metal ones just came out maybe within the last year or so. And the resin watch itself has been around for at this point, pre pandemic. I want to say it's been about four or five years. Yeah. Now. And this one just came out. They're doing some electrochromatic color plating okay. on the watch. So the the hour indices are very uh, shiny purple. Yeah, they're blue. pretty cool. It's a cool color. And it refracts depending on how you move yeah. the, the watch around. So the, the watch is a, a street price or a sticker price in the U.S. of $580. Which is fine. It's, it's not great. It's a battery powered yeah, Casio. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it's solar powered and it's got Bluetooth, it's still, but it's still, yeah. it's a 500 oh, it Bluetooth. Yeah. For what? Setting time. So when I change time zones, it automatically just changes. Ah, I see. Okay. So it's 580 bucks in the U S in Japan. It was at 61,000 yen. And then, so you do the math and usually you just move the decimal place over. So I can't do that anymore. Right. Yeah. Because the yen is so weak to the dollar but that was dude that was the other thing in korea that was confusing i think it's 1350 won to a dollar yeah that's not math dude nobody's doing that math well and that's the same thing was with the yen it was 135 yen to the dollar so right years it past you it used to be like 100 110 yen to the dollar so it was it's easy mostly, yeah, yeah you just move the decimal place yeah. over and you're you, you're within the ballpark right so i look it up on my phone i do the the yen conversion and this 580 dollar watch is like 350 ish which is that's good and then i'm like okay well that's good enough to do it so i i I go and buy it and i had my password with me well then i get the tax free price which dropped it down even further so i ended up paying like 290 ish yeah like on my credit card statement for a 580 dollar watch plus tax here so it would have been a 600 dollar watch here right that i got basically for half off just because of the tax free and the the weakness of the yen in the in the currency exchange. Yeah, with the exchange and the tax free same thing in Korea, I probably saved 70, 80, 90 bucks. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, because I mean here in the US, if you can find it, you're lucky to get it just for the sticker price. Otherwise, if you're buying yeah. it online, you're paying, you're paying somebody who's flipped for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, so that was great. It was cool to to stumble across that and your watch looks really nice. Yeah. yeah I've I like it. I've worn it nonstop. I wore it what out of the store. And I've had it on. This is now a week and a half. Oh, it's only because like I was in Big Bear sure, all sure. last week until yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to put this away and grab a different watch. Did you dress up for Halloween? Yes, but what in the on? most laziest way possible. Because our neighborhood had a a block party, yeah. and so they had a taco guy come out and we had a bounce house and all that stuff. But the prerequisite is you had to dress up. Yeah, and so Jeanette and I we like dressing up when we feel like it. But this year we were just like ah, and the weather. It was kind of unpredictable. Like some days it was kind of warm. Yeah, it was a weird. Then it would get kind yeah. of cold. And so trying to plan for a costume for an outdoor party, not knowing what the weather is going to be like in two weeks is kind of a challenge. So we did the the cheapest and easiest and laziest thing we can do. And we bought pre-made costumes. There's nothing wrong with that. And Jeanette and I went as a peanut butter jelly sandwich. So I was a piece of bread with peanut butter on it. And Jeanette was a piece of bread with oh, jelly on it. Oh, you bought like a pre-made couple's costume. Yes. That's weird. And I thought it would have been creepier if, if uh, she had peanut butter smothered over her face and I had jelly on my face. Uh-huh. Because then... I get it. Yeah. Yeah. But that also would have been gross. Yes, because the peanut butter may not have red <laughs> as Ooh, peanut yeah, butter. Yeah, poop. Poop yeah. face. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, oh, that's not bad. Yeah. And it was like a, you know, $25 couple's costume kind of thing. And I... That got us like access it. to the taco guy in the party. So that, that was, was our prerequisite. You have to light, like, like we called it light costumes. Light costumes? Like you just put some, just effort, put some effort into it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. I think that was kind of the gist of this thing as well. Yeah. I was Ted Lasso. You pulled it off yeah. magnificently. I shaved and everything for it. And it I think was, you should just rock the mustache more I don't often. know, man. I don't, I don't love it, to be honest with you. Because you have to shave the rest of the face. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, that's, that's the harder yeah. part. But and I also feel like then I just have a, like a fat face. Yeah. Maybe I, if I lose another 15 pounds. I have that same problem. Like, I, I love stupid visual hair. Yeah, yeah, and, I do. And so I shaved it. I had a handlebar. I did the, the old-timey train guy. Yeah, I, I did that. Yeah. yeah. Basically, when you're starting with a full beard, it's a lot easier to take chunks of it away. Right. Than it is to try to grow it back in, in waves. Um, but when I went to Japan, I had basically just the handlebar mustache and stubble. 
And so now three weeks later, I've got a full beard. <laughs> right. So I've been, yeah, I've been letting it come back, but because of the, the mustache is still a little bit more prominent. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. Yeah. But it is funny. The kid, the kid across the street runs over and he's, my mom says to call you Ted Lasso. I'm like, yeah, at least the people see it. Yeah. That was but pretty funny. The kid has no idea why. No, he had no clue, but it was pretty funny. That was a, uh, that, that was, was a well done costume. Thank you. That was uh you know, bought the jacket, put on some pants and shoes I already had. He's an easy one to pull off. Although I, I should have put on a, uh, like a button up shirt underneath it. That would have been perfect. Oh, but I had a, I didn't just even, a t-shirt. I, I was gonna say, I don't think the t-shirt even stood, stood out cause you had no. the jacket on, but he always had like a collared shirt and uh, I have a blue collared shirt that would have been perfect. Yeah. Like a light blue. And so he's next always time. got the, the Nike dunks or yep. the Jordans and stuff. So if you've made it a easy, Nikes, had a pair of Nikes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I made it really easy. I was, uh, that was literally like a no effort. Now, did you dress the dog up? No, that's, well, that's not true. We did. What was Ripley had a costume? I don't remember what it was because he hates it. Pepper so, just had a t-shirt. When you put anything on Ripley, yeah. he just freezes. Oh, okay. And he stares at you with this really pathetic look and he won't move and he, like, he hates it. So how is he with like a, a bandana? Like, that doesn't fine? bother him, okay. especially if you're distracting him. And actually I need to work on the doggles with him. Um, so that, or the rec specs, I should say, so that he can wear them because he, I wouldn't normally be like, Oh, and my dog needs glasses. First he squints in the sun really bad cause it's bright. I think it's, it has to do with his eye color, Yeah. but also he dives into bushes like head yeah. first. I'm like, bro, you're going to get something in your eye. So I would like a little protection. We need to work on that, but he's fine. Maple was a hula girl again. Oh, and she with a coconut bra and everything, man. She rocks it. She doesn't care. She's like, this is, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Pepper's fine with like sweaters, shirts and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Anything on her head, she doesn't like. So she's got a hoodie. So if you try to put the hood up, she, oh, she gets annoyed with she it. She doesn't like it. Yeah. But her, uh, her, her outfit this year was literally a t-shirt that said, which better have my candy. Oh, uh, okay. So that yeah. worked out. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was easy. So it was, uh, not too bad, but that was, it was fun. And then we had a few people over and I made food i don't know what i'm i'll try tip i think yeah this year trick-or-treating was kind of interesting because this was the first year where grayson um wanted to go out on his own what was he um what was he a tomato oh, no he was perry the platypus from phineas and ferb right I don't know. it's just a onesie pajama outfit like super easy oh, okay. like again like minimal effort but him and his buddies went out and so they're all 13 14 year olds and so this was the first time we didn't accompany him trick or treating. So Jeanette and I got just sit on. We got to sit on the front porch yeah. handing out candy. And I don't know if it was just because of the time of year, or the, because of it was a Tuesday night, I believe. Yep. We really only got trick or treaters from about seven o'clock to eight o'clock. Oh, ours was all night. Like we usually get them a little earlier. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't get dark until later, and then. Yeah, yeah we had we had a lot of kids this year. We had Not a, as many as last year, but a lot of kids still. We had a good number of kids. I, I want to say probably a hundred or so. Yeah. But that's still quite low compared to like previous years. Like we We also live in a massive neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. And you also have some houses that are pretty well decorated, like down the street. Yeah. So you, Yeah, right around the with all their they're all on the news and stuff. Right. Yeah. So you kind of get that overflow of traffic of people that come for that. I would just keep I want to be on the news. For good things? <laughs> for, ha- for, yeah, for Halloween house. How many uh, screen projector setups did you see like yours? Uh, a couple, but not quite the same. Yeah, yeah. Are you repurposing your screen and projector for Christmas? We are going to use it for Christmas, and then we're going to use it for movies in the backyard when we got our oh. fire pit set up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we had a fire pit, and then we had a new fire pit, and now we have no fire pit. So your original fire pit was just a standard metal... Yeah, one of those... Dish, Bowl, dish pit yeah. things. It's just off the ground. It, it's it was fine, but you know they was they start to rust through and yeah. they start to get old. And so I ordered and received a solo stove. And um, what made you choose that? The smokeless fire pit. And my brother in law has one. Because aren't they like bank? They're not cheap. Yeah. I waited for it to go on sale. Um. So and what, what it was a hundred bucks off? No, it was like. Three or four hundred bucks. Off. Oh damn! That's yeah, a decent, yeah, it was a sale. Decent discount. Yeah. We also bought the like table surround for it, so we not just the pit. We have like it sits inside of this like basically like a big table. Okay. But that way the and the thing stays cool, so the dogs don't get Bump on into it. it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the the way the other ones are, you can get right up next to it. Right. Right. And a couple times, like a ball's got under it, and one of the dogs has stuck their heads under him. Like, yeah. What are you the doing? Dogs have no 
Yeah. No situational so, awareness. No. Yeah. So we got that. Um, the the bummer was it showed up and it was the bottom rim. So it's like a they're all stainless and they're a double wall thing because science and superheating stuff is how it doesn't smoke. Um, but the the whole bottom on like I would say two thirds a third of the thing was just destroyed. So the cardboard box did it show caved in on the box? Oh, it was trashed. Okay, the yeah, box it was wasn't trashed. Good. So. I I'm like super bummed. I'm like, that sucks. Cause we want it for the holiday yeah. uh, for Thanksgiving. What do I do? And so I, I had texted their help. They have a help text. Uh, you know, you oh, text yeah. uh, after hours yeah. and not expecting anything until the next day, 20 minutes later, I get a response. Oh no way. And I had a good back and forth and I said, Hey, this is what happened. Here's some pictures. The girl helping me said, no problem. Here's a return label. I said, that's great, but we wanted to use it for the holiday. Yeah. And we've got people coming over Friday, some other stuff, whatever. She goes, don't worry about it. Use it through the holidays. The label's good for two weeks. Oh, okay. Clean it out. Yeah. When you're done, send it back. So I just sent it back yesterday. Still smoldering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I cleaned it out. I sent it back. Does we'll... it clean up easily? Yeah. Hey, yeah. I don't know there was... hose it out or. No, there was, it wasn't much. I vacuumed it. Okay. Um, but it, cause it's got like an ash pan. And then a burn tray on top of that. And then you take, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, but anyways, clean that out, shipped it back yesterday. As You're soon as they get this, like, fancy it, they'll pants send it back. Overlander, you got a Yeti cooler. You've now got a solo <laughs> stove. You're buying all the bitch brands. Yeah, you like, know what's going to happen is then I'm going to sell the Forerunner. Yeah. That'll be the next step, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, no, but it, you know what? I, I looked at a bunch of them and I like the way. So having seen one before, I also, the surround was a big sell. Right. That was a big that part of sense, it. Yeah. Yeah. To have that. And we looked at a bunch and we, we talked about, do we get propane? Do we want to, I like wood. Yeah. The only thing I will say, this thing goes through wood fast because it burns really hot. Oh. So it does eat through wood. So there's a bit of a trade off, but I mean, things could be worse. Are, are you getting like um, fragrant wood? No, we've just been buying the bundles at the yeah we're, s- stop and shop or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, I didn't know if you were. Oh, here's some hickory or here's some oak. No, I bought. It. I did buy some seasoned, <laughs> se- uh, not se- uh, what's that called? Kiln dried seasoned wood off of Amazon of all places. Okay, which is weird. I think it's cherry. I, I it have stupid. you tried it? Yeah, it was dumb. No. Oh. And they're in, you know, the logs are all uniform and that's great, but it's just probably just pressed newspaper. I'd rather just, I have an ax. I split wood. It's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, so we were out of town. I do love having a fire. It is a nice, we spent a lot of time in the backyard. So you think this is going to be like a a weekly, like Friday, Saturday night kind of thing or, uh, over like, like last year we were doing fires probably two or three times a week. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, it's a nice, like, we'll eat dinner outside and have a fire. Okay. And then we've got one of those, uh, what are those things called? The patio heaters. Yeah. So we'll turn that on and play. We'll sit outside and play cards. I, I, I would rather sit outside than inside. We, we've we been watching a lot of TV lately, but we did just get a new couch. So maybe that's got something to do with it. So you're saying you need a fire pit indoors? No, I'm saying we need to get <laughs> a couch not outdoors. be watching so much TV oh. is what I'm saying. The... Uh, the other day I was listening to some uh, Conan O'Brien needs a friend podcast and they, they did the, the summer episodes and they were outside and they were sponsored by solo stove. And I guess they have a mm. pizza oven. Yeah, they do. So they have, you can get a bunch of different stuff. So there's like this tower thing you can put on top and they have like a flat top or a grill pan or a, a pizza thing. So you're a, a fan of cooking. So would you no. pick up any of those? No, no, no. Because, because I've got, a flat top already. True. I have a barbecue, a smoker. But do you have a pizza? Who the hell's cooking on their fire pit? S'mores. That's you fine. You could be if you had a pizza oven. I don't. I would just get a pizza oven. But also, I don't eat that much pizza. True. And you know they make it at the store. Like, there's pizza places on purpose. Well, yes, yes. There are pizza My mom has a pizza oven that they use all the time. But that's a real... Yeah, fire, brick wood, oven. Yeah, yeah, it's the whole thing. Um, no, but I will say... That yes, solo stove is expensive. The build quality, I'm very impressed with. I mean, mine the shipping thing's not their fault. Yeah, right? I am very impressed with the actual quality of the the pieces. How I'm, soon do you think you'll get your replacement? The, is it one of those four days, something like that? You have it to wait till they receive it before. Yeah, they ship but it? they're sending it back. I mean, I you know I'm out of town anyways. Well, they'll, they'll send it back in the same box. You <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> no, but it you know that part and the customer service that is pretty on impressive. Point. The fact that you were able to text after hours and get a response. Yeah, and bad. it was a real person. It wasn't like AI. And yeah. and they she goes, oh, you you got the label in your mail, no problem. Yeah, in your email. I uh I had a problem with the the stupid AI chat with AT and T. So you know, well, as I mentioned earlier, do not get. We finally got. I convinced somebody to get a new phone, yeah. and it turned into a. Jeanette and I got 
our new iPhones. Yeah. And so they had AT and T had a trade in promotion for eight hundred and thirty dollars. Well, like uh, depending on what phone, depending you on what phone you yeah. traded in, yeah, it would be money off. So yeah. Jeanette's, we we had older phones. We had iPhone twelves. I had the iPhone twelve okay. Pro. Jeanette had the iPhone twelve Max. Yeah. Non- Did she get another big one? No. Oh, she. That was the thing. Is like she had the the Max for a couple of phones. Yeah, yeah. And so I thought that she would want it. And she realized that after looking at my phone and her phone, she's like, the screen's not that much bigger. So she's like, I don't need that extra half I cu- inch. I couldn't go back. Yeah, she decided it was easier to carry a smaller phone. Sure, that's fair. So, um, so yep. she wanted to go the smaller route. We but- traded an eleven Pro, and it was like it's eight hundred thirty bucks. But the way they do the trade in is. BS. Stupid, and so yeah. that was a whole process. And so I elected to have hers because her phone was getting mailed to us. So I had elected oh, okay. to have to send her phone back in via the mail. My phone was available at a local store, so I I had decided to trade my. Why phone would, why was the difference between the phones? Mine was the uh, 15 Pro 256 gigabyte. Hers was the 15 Pro 128, but different colors. Oh, uh, so uh, yeah, okay, whatever. So That's mine was available in store. Hers hers was shipped out, but like even with her current phone, she only had about like fifty five gigs. Oh wow, okay. Used like yeah, yeah, sure. So anyways, so we do the whole trade in process. I wipe the phones. I, I pull the SIM cards, turn off the Find My iPhone. Do all the steps, and I decide I'm going to drop both of them off at the Apple Store or at the uh, AT and T store. Yeah, sure. So I go to the store, do the return. The guy turns them on and does this whole yeah, online yeah. checklist. And then I get two receipts that, that say I've traded hundred bucks. Right. Yeah, the, yeah. The receipt says that the value is absurdly low. I lost my sh- and called them, but he's like, don't worry about that. That that's just for our internal system, but you get the promotional value. Yeah, yeah, right. So Jeanette's old phone paid for her new phone. Even. Oh, that's cool. Paid it off. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. She owes nothing on it. I traded in. I gave Grayson my iPhone 12 and I traded in. My old, old iPhone 10. Oh, okay. That was Grayson's phone at the yeah, time. Yeah. Traded that one in, and so that gave me $330 off. Still good. So, it not, yeah. so I owe 700 bucks basically, the, on the new phone. We traded an 11 Pro, so we got the 830, yeah. which means we paid a couple hundred dollars for the new phone. Yeah. But the way they do all of it is stupid. The credits. And the and it's 36 months. Yeah. It's total horseshit. Yeah. But the we had a couple other things that we had to do, too, and they didn't explain very clearly uh, the activation fees and whatever. Yeah, I it's lost a $20 it. like activation. I thing. lost it and I called. Uh, so I called AT&T's customer service and they told me the first time they go, oh, too bad. You have to go back in the store. Yeah. Or you can call this phone number when you're in the store and they'll help you. I'm like, that doesn't even make sense, dude. Yeah. You can't do anything. And so I did screw that. I'm not, I don't have time for this. So I just called their extra special helpline. Yeah. And they without being in the store. Yeah. And okay. they're like, oh, yeah, OK, I understand what's going on. So I'll give you as much as I can. And she goes, and also you're supposed to be getting these other discounts and I don't know why. So she fixed that. OK. But so our phone bill goes from like 200 bucks a month to 110. OK. Yeah. Which is fine. It was just a pain in the ass to get there. And I was just like, they don't make anything easy, obviously. No. And that's the bullshit thing. So I, I trade the phones in in store on November 3rd. I leave for Japan on November 4th. I'm getting email notifications saying, you have 30 days to turn in your trade-in device. But you've already done it. But I've already done it. Right. And then I get back and I get emails saying, hey, you only have so many days. I'm like, what the fuck? I've, yeah. I've got these pieces of paper that say I've traded them in. You're telling me I haven't. So then I try doing the AI chat. It's like, what can I help you today? I'm like, uh, phone trade-in not yet received, but already dropped off at store. And it has no idea what you're talking about. And it about. has no idea, yeah. right. And then I try calling, and then it, they have fucked up hours, and then the, the hours are only like Eastern time. And yeah, I'm, that's I'm on Pacific, up. And it's like, yeah. oh, fuck. So then I finally wait the next day. I call, and then I'm calling somebody that's clearly not in the U.S. They have an Amer- oh, okay. American name, but the accent and the inability to understand what they're saying is pretty frustrating but it's like all right fine whatever yeah then the guy's like oh we see that your phones have just been received at the the warehouse like the inspection i'm like they were already inspected in person when i dropped them off he's like oh yeah but we still have to inspect them okay (laughs) and then he's like oh yeah so we just received them on november 19th and i'm calling him like on november 19th i'm like what the fuck are the odds of that happening yeah that that just means he had to hit a button probably but it took 
about eight minutes for that button to be pressed because he kept putting me on hold. Yeah, yeah. And, but he's, I'm not on hold because I can hear calls happening in the background. Oh, weird. So I'm just waiting. And then so the, they're telling me, oh, yeah, we, we have received your phones and we have to go through and, and inspect to make sure that, you know, the, the credit matches or whatever. But every time I go into the goddamn app to check my status, it still shows I've started the process, but it makes no statement that they've received the phones or that anything is happening yet. I'm like, I should check mine. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. But when I look at the phone, they they the bill has the credit applied, but the credit shouldn't apply because they haven't received my trade in phone. So I don't know what the hell's going on, but that's super weird. I also think the eSIM thing is a trip on the new phones. Yes. So I have, if you look at mine, like if you look at my bars, they look like exclamation points. Yeah. I have a secondary line now. Why? Did good, you- good question. Unclear. Did you have to add a new line to get some crazy promo deals? So they need apparently, but like it was, it was very confusing and nobody at at t can explain it to me. <laughs> and so that was another part of the thing. I was like, wait, why am I paying for something that I don't want? She's like, we can take it off, but it only saves you. It, it ends up being like a wash. Oh, and I was like, oh, okay, that's weird. But now I have a phone where I can give telemarketers or credit, whatever. And then, how and do I you don't know, ever have to listen to it. How do you know when that phone is ringing with which number? It tells you. And I can switch. Like, if I want to call you from a different number. So I just logged into my app. Yeah. Do you want to check on your device return? Oh, that's so weird. See trade in details. And it's going to tell me, we haven't received your device. That's so stupid. Yeah, it was, it, I don't know. I, I will say that those. the best way of dealing with at t is to make sure you find a corporate store. Oh, yeah. You cannot go to a non-corporate store. You will waste your time. Yes. Because they don't care. No. And so that's that's the thing. And so the store I went to was a corporate store. But yeah, it still says my trade-in status has been started for both of these devices, but it doesn't actually show that it's it's been... It's weird because mine says nothing about it. Yeah. Because there's, there's three steps. There's started, there's returned, and there's completed. But the return is blank and the completed is blank. I don't even have a thing that says we did a trade-in. That's weird. Yeah, I don't don't understand. But the thing is, I mean, I have the paperwork. So luckily I've got printed confirmation that says I traded these devices in. This is the status. This is the the device ID number. So I have all of that critical information. So at least I have paperwork that shows that I dropped it off. Because I've also heard horror stories of people doing the the mail-in option. Yeah. And the packages get lost in transit. We turned ours in in the store, and we got a paper. I don't know where the paper is. Yeah. I probably put it in the shredder. I was so mad. <laughs> yeah, so both my phone and Jeanette's phone says that our trading status has been started, um, but hasn't uh, been received or completed yet. So I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah, they've got so much random crap. That, like I don't even know what half this stuff is anymore. Yeah, and I hate all the bullshit. Like, oh, you can add coverage, but well, it's not the... It's Apple not care. Apple Care. It's, it's the at t bullshit yeah. coverage. Or, hey, do you want to cut down on spam robocalls? Download they, the at t app. It's like, no, you fucker. Yeah. This is your <laughs> network. You block it on your end. Why right. do I have to download an app? They also wanted, uh, they kept trying to get us to get TV. And I was like, and internet. And I was like, we had you and you sucked. Yeah. And we got a new one and we're keeping it. Yeah. So please stop. Every time we walked in that store. And yes. we had to go in there three times. So even though I've been a, a long-time at t customer, we can add at t to the list of sponsors that are on the shit list because they're not, well, they're not sponsors. They but suck. Prospective sponsors because they do suck. But it sucks because they all suck. Pretty much every utility sucks. Yeah. Every internet provider sucks. Yep. Every cell phone provider, every cable provider. Which is, okay, so cell phone shopping is frustrating. But you know what's not frustrating? Casual car shopping. Well, yeah, especially when you don't have any plans to buy. Yeah. We we went to a few dealers over the last couple of weeks. Has the um, experience changed? Like, when you get out of the car, are you getting, like, mobbed by salespeople? No. In fact, I was at a Porsche dealer yesterday and did not even get one person that acknowledged us. All right. And we just walked a lot and looked at some of the used cars and left. Yeah. Where, yeah. where at? Irvine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if that dealer's any good, but we also went to Selman right down the street yeah and looked at which is the a chevy new, dealer chevy dealer looked at the new corvette um i hadn't i hadn't sat in one do they have them like on the lot or just one on the showroom floor? they have a couple oh, okay uh that are on the showroom floor nothing like we didn't get to drive which was a bummer but um did get to check those out i do like the interior 
Yeah. I like the way they look. They sound really cool. I'm they did not make me excited. I'm so on the fence with the Corvette. Like in some, and I think it all has to do with how it's painted. Because you can yeah, have the, the option wrong of, one looks really wrong. Yes, yeah. and he, but it's at the same time it's hard to describe why. Right. Because you can have it all body color, and then yes. you can have certain things accented in black or carbon or carbon. Yeah. Or I think even a different color. Some guys are doing it on their own in a different color. And the convertibles look horrible. And sometimes you look at it and you're like, is that a Ferrari? No, it's a vet. Okay, so like, okay, that's pretty impressive. Right. Other times you're like, what the hell is it? Oh, it's a I Corvette. do like the. I think they call it rapid blue. It's the bright blue. Yeah. But what's weird about it is like it's I guess it's a like it's the you know, that's the hot color right now. It's like the Miami blue, like Porsche. Kind Por- of. Well, it's like Porsche shark blue. Yeah. But not as dark. Correct. So it's almost more cartoony, but it does look good on the car. But then they have that tennis ball yellow that looks like trash. Yes. It's weird. There's, their their choices are strange. That that blue, there's a Corvette in that blue, but the owner decided to go with a contrasting yellow stripe no so like there's some hood stripe there's i think the wow. the air intakes on the side yeah, yeah, yeah. are that same yellow so that killed it yeah that's bad and so i think that's the problem is a lot of these corvette owners are maybe stereotypical jorts and new balance owners oh yeah and so they're they're dressing them up as if it was a you know 80s or 90s corvette but and it's not but the modifications or their or their taste is what's ruining the aesthetic of the vehicle. But I also think on some cars, it depends on the color. You don't want the entire car to be body color because you need to break up. Yeah, some you of have to break some with, with some black. The blue with the black, like around the scoops and stuff, looks good. Yeah, and the all black yeah. looks good. Uh, yeah, it's okay. White and black looks good, but yeah. I think it's some of the brighter colors. I saw one that was all white, like everything was white, and, it's and it looked yeah, it looked weird. Like something was wrong with it. Right, and I. And I don't know why so much of that uncanny valley happens with the Corvette, but it's something about the contrast, whether or not it has those pieces be body colored or not. Yeah. And that it was cool to see, though, because it was a thing. I was like, OK, if I was going to get a Corvette. Yeah. Would it be interesting if I was going to have a midlife crisis? Would I want a Corvette? No, it turns out the yeah. answer is no. I've had one. I got it done early. Yeah. I was 18. Oh, no, it wasn't even 18. It was like 16. Would you have like a C3? At a 76. Yeah. OK. It was terrible. Awful car. <laughs> Uh, but that thing, so I, I'm done with that. So you walk on onto the, the Chevy dealership lot. Yeah. Are you getting swarmed? No, there was one guy that he's like, can you help? Can I help you? I was like, yeah, I actually just want to look at the Corvettes. The one thing that I didn't like was he kept forcing me. He's like, oh, this guy's the Corvette specialist. He'll be over in a second. He's the Corvette. I was like, I just want to sit in the car. Yeah, I yeah. don't want to talk to somebody. Yeah. I don't and have any questions. That's no, a- and, but it, he, it ended up being good. He was really nice. We talked about a few the things. The specialist or the other guy? The specialist guy. I mean, they were both really nice, but yeah. he did tell me, he said, if you order a car, they have no markups on orders. Uh, so you can get it at MSRP unless it's a Z06. They're doing a markup on those. I was like, of course. Yeah, yes. sure. Uh, it takes about a year to get a car. He said oh, that shit. it used to be two to three as how long the production lead times were, but now they're down to about a year. If you order something, that seems absurd. It's stupid. Uh, but we were talking, I was like, okay, cool. Thank you. And then, so we we're actually on our way to Costco. Yeah. And over the Costco that we go to is right by the auto mall. Okay. And I was like, man, let's go look. Cause yeah, I'm, I still hadn't driven a Bronco. Okay. So I was like, let's go check out the Ford store. Did you still want to drive a Corvette? After seeing it, not being able to drive it, or was Not that really. just seeing it was enough to yeah, take it off like, the list? Meh, it's fine. Okay. So we go to the Bronco, and uh, they don't have a Bronco on the lot. They have 480 Bronco Sports. There's yeah, no the one new that nobody Broncos. wants. Yeah. Yeah, but there is a used Raptor Bronco with 100 miles on it. No, it had maybe 12,000 something oh, like shit, that. Oh shit, it actually yeah, had real yeah, miles. Yeah, yeah. Cuz I know that was a common thing like they were trying to get around the, the dealer markup so they would they would say it's a used vehicle and then mark it up above. No, this was actually somebody you could tell somebody to use that. Like there was a um, one of the the weather stripping on the door had a little slit and stuff in it. Okay. Like somebody used the truck, which yeah. is fine. Um, but I hadn't driven one, so I I thought they would just be like, "Oh no, you can't drive that." Like, yeah. it's, you know, nope. He let me drive it uh, and drove it around, and it's fine. It's got decent power. It makes great noises when you put the exhaust in loud mode, yeah. and it has all the settings and stuff you would want. Was he just a chatterbox the entire time on the test drive? Or? He was. He was a talker. Uh, but he was a nice enough guy. A little weird, but nice yeah, enough guy. I always wonder, like, 
what does a salesperson think they're doing when they're talking your ear off? Are they trying to educate you on the car or is it more just to keep it? No, I think he just wanted to talk. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, you know, what are the odds you're really going to buy this? I was like, pretty much zero. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but the guy was talking and anyway, so we d- did drive that. I like the way the Bronco looks. Yeah. But it is, in my opinion not as usable as the forerunner as a daily usable vehicle oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and i wouldn't buy one yeah which is a bummer because i love them i think they're great but i wouldn't buy one so off the list okay. not that there was ever really a list but it is fun to go casual shopping. i like that so you're looking at a possible replacement for the forerunner corvette on one side and bronco well, I mean, on the other it's not even like a replacement it's just like a hey if i was gonna buy something random what would i get yeah. right and then well, when i, I shop for the forerunner it was V70 wagon, yeah, Forerunner, and the Jag, and I drove all of them. I know, like when I was shopping for a car, like my taste was all over the map, right? And people were like, "What the hell? Those are all this?" I'm like, "Yeah, I just want something that's fun to drive." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, the form factor may vary slightly, but as long as it's got that fun to drive factor, I don't yeah. care. And I like like the Forerunner. I get in it, and I don't drive it that much anymore. But when I get in it, like you know, I'll take the the dog. It's the dog mobile. They go to yeah. the park and I go wherever, and it's like driving a big twenty year old tractor, and it's great. Yeah. I love it. I mean, it's because that's when the platform was developed. Yeah, I mean, that is what it is, basically. <laughs> but it, it is great. So, you know, there's just, it, it is fun to dream and, like, look at stuff. And I, you know, I do look at what new cars are, and it's fun to have. So when you were at the auto show, time did you to go, just go kick more tires? We looked at the, so I was at Fashion Island a few days, or I guess last weekend that would have been. Okay. It was at Fashion Island, and they have a Lexus. Fashion Island is an outdoor shopping mall yeah. in Newport Beach, California. Otherwise called Fascist Island. Because of the Newport Beach yeah. guys. And, you know. uh, so they have like a Lexus pop-up little yeah, store. Yeah, but it's been there for a while. Yeah, yeah, but. It's a store in the mall, basically. Yeah, it's the GX is there now. The new okay. GX. They had a GX overtrail in the earth color with the black roof. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so we looked at those again at the auto show the new GX, I would trade the forerunner for that. However, the overtrail, like the, so there's three levels of overtrail. I would just want the basic trim, yeah, which is not basic. Right. But what's cool about the overtrail, you lose the third row, which I wouldn't want. Right. You don't need it. It puts you on 18s with off road, real off road tires. And so you get like the stuff you would want without the luxury pieces that they force on you sometimes. But it's sixty-seven grand, and it still has leather, and it still has which is gr- fine. That doesn't bother me. Yeah. But it is, it is seriously nice. I would be afraid to destroy it. Yeah, and I would get it. The nori green looks super awesome. Until you get that first scratch, it's all about yeah. that first. Once you get the sur- the dead- forerunner, I got day one first scratch because I took it immediately off road. Yeah, and then you got egged a couple of years <sighs> or a couple months later. Yeah, that was not cool. Yeah, yeah, but that took the the new car. It did and worries it- right up. You know what? It's it's used. It, it definitely. Uh, How many miles are you on the Forerunner now? Almost thirty-seven. That's still pretty damn low. Oh yeah, yeah, for a Toyota. Yeah. And, but this is the longest I've ever owned a car. Isn't that weird? Yes. The fact that you is it longest in terms of mileage or in terms of year? Uh no, no, in terms of time. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know if like you've never had a car that you've put that many miles on, or mm. it's just you've had it for that long. I've had a car I put that many miles on, but I did that all in one year. And so, yeah, this is the longest by time. It's it is strange, and I don't nec- I don't want to get rid of it yeah. per se. Well, especially but, when it's like paid for. It's it's kind of the convenience of like yeah yeah. It's just there's there's other. So the amount of camping and stuff I do, I could probably get away with not having a dedicated truck. True. And having something fun is back on my wish list. Okay. Not that the forums aren't fun, but it's a different kind of fun. Yeah. Then, but yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably nothing. And aren't you also con- contemplating getting rid of one of your bikes? I do want to sell the Ducati. So, But I have to put effort into doing so. Just to take pictures and put the ad together? That kind of effort? Sure. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. You make it sound easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like you're cleaning up your, your desk wiring. There, there are tasks that on that surface don't, don't want look to all do. that difficult, yeah, but yeah, you still yeah. want to do them. Yeah, and I did ride the Ducati the other day, and it is great. It's always fun when you're procrastinating, trying to avoid doing something because it's a hassle, and then when you actually do it, it only takes like 10 minutes, and you're like, why the fuck did I procrastinate so long to do this? Because I don't want to do it. Right. Yeah. But so that, that taking a picture and posting it up could be like a 10-minute adventure. 
Yeah. I'll but then you it. would have to deal with all the idiots asking if you want to trade or low ball and all that right. bullshit. And it's pretty much like that bike, I still have to deal with the credit union. So it's just a... Oh, you paid off the title and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> so therefore, you won't. Well, I and it's funny because it's... You would think I could just sell it to a dealer or something and they would take it because it's a great bike. But they don't even want to do that. What is the... I mean, I haven't paid attention to it but obviously like used car pricing went nuts yeah and then like car availability kind of went bikes crazy. went nuts for a while everything went nuts for a while right i just didn't pay attention to it so much on the bike side of things so is it still pretty easy to get more than you paid for your bike these days or uh, i mean i wouldn't probably get more than i paid for it but i can cover myself right. easily and make a walk away with a little bit oh, that's above that which is fine um you know and it's a unique bike so it's just getting the, finding the right person is also a pain in the ass yeah. So, I don't know. And the whole test drive thing is always weird, too. You no, that's like, not happening. Yeah. Mm-mm. It does need an annual service, so that's good. That's uh, okay. 300 bucks probably. Uh, the BMW needs a major service, which means it needs the valves adjusted. It needs all the fluids. It needs the final drive adjusted, or does all it, the, the fluids in that chain. 1200 change. bucks? It's about $1,000. Yeah. And it's got two wheels. Is that just because it's a BMW? A little bit of that. A little bit of... You know, once you get in valve adjustments and stuff, it's regardless of a pain in the ass. Is that common with all bikes or is it just a BMW? A lot of bikes, yeah. It's pretty common. Um, Because I've been trying to think of like last time. They don't all use hydraulic valves. I was going to say, like last time I heard a car needing a valve adjustment. You know, it's like. Yeah, because everything's moved to hydraulic to adjust itself. A lot of bikes still don't have that. So, yeah, it's it's cool. All I do is spend money. (laughs) It's fine. Money on stuff that I just don't want to spend money on. Yeah. Yeah, I did buy a new orbital sander though. Ooh, what are you sanding? Nah, I'm gonna refinish a patio furniture piece. Oh, it all needs it. Yeah. And uh, have you looked at patio furniture? Oh, it's always been absurd. Yeah, the pricing Dude, on that shit is nuts. Saw a table set went yesterday just screwing around. Saw a table set, ten thousand dollars. Holy shit! For a table and the chairs. What the hell was it all made out of? Uh, marine grade polymer. That's just <laughs> polymer. It's plastic. Yeah. 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 And aluminum. Yeah. 10 grand. It's, it's crazy. How... I thought the guy was joking, dude. Did you go to like one of those barbecue and patio places? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. Th- it's already marked up there just to begin with, but, but I thought I legit thought he was kidding and he was not, he was not. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, we were looking at, cause we read it our backyard a couple yeah. years ago. And so Jeanette wanted a, a egg chair. Well, oh like, yeah. Yeah. I know. What you're the rattan, yeah, yeah. you know, a little cocoon chair thing. And it was, I thought overpriced for what it was at at uh, Lowe's when we bought it. And I, th- I don't even remember. It was like 500 bucks, 600 bucks. And once it went on sale for like, you know, 75 bucks off, we just jumped on it because the odds of getting it that low were, were quite slim. Yeah. But there are certain pieces like when you'll walk through Lowe's and you'll see the set price. And you're like, who's going to pay 2,500 bucks for these aluminum chairs and cushions that odds are aren't going to last that many years. And, uh, all I ended up doing is just you keep it. You see something you like, just keep your eye out on it, and you just wait till the end of season shit comes around, right? And you hope that it gets marked down. The hard part is in California, there's no real end of season. That is true. Yeah, it's just it, in terms of like lows, it's like okay, well they got to get rid of that shit to put up the Christmas decorations or the Halloween yeah, decorations yeah. or whatever the seasonal thing is, because for whatever reason, patio furniture and seasonal shit take up the same section of the store. Yeah, which is always weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same at Target. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. But I mean, we, the stuff we have is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's wood, and it was more like, do we want to refinish it because yeah. it does need maintenance? Yeah. Or get something, and I have. I said, look, we could look. It's I'm w- surprised you bought a tool instead of just taking it over to your brother-in-law shop and doing it on the weekend and just using his. It was forty-five dollars for a sander. Right, but he's, that I'll use for a bunch of other stuff too. Yeah, but, I have. We have a bunch of prop like stuff to do. I know, but once you realize how much of a pain in the ass it is to re- to strip, you know, multiple fa- faces and sides. Of oh no, the I furniture. know it's not. Well, it's not the first time. So, I also just want something to like. You want to grow your tool collection. That's actually <laughs> correct. <laughs> but the you know the thing is like it was a deal where like okay I have no idea how much this stuff costs. You have no idea how much this stuff costs. Let's just go to a patio store and find and get, out. And then you realize okay it's because we looked online right. You look at okay this came from IKEA. Let's look at IKEA. Well they don't have the same thing or they don't have anything yeah. that looks good, right? And then you realize it just oh, it snowballs. It's crazy. I don't understand. So when you refinish it, are you going to just do a different color stain, stain color stain? Are you going to paint? What do you? What's your plan for the new finish? I'm just going to stain it, but in probably like a 
one of those deck stains. Okay. Just like an outdoor stain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With it. yeah. Yeah, and then we have a couple, like, these cool mid-century modern tables that I want to refinish. How's the uh, hardware on the outdoor stuff? Yeah, that's the problem, is that, the like, the table that we have, the stuff that holds the wings and all that, yeah. like, it's we've gorilla glued it a couple times <laughs> and putting it back together. So that's the other thing. It's like, do we, would we like new stuff? Sure. But, but again. Yeah, when you look at the value of it, can you get 10 grand worth of value at a new set? It's like, hell no. Uh, yeah it's 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 a yeah it's a challenge i mean sometimes i mean i don't i don't have ten thousand dollars to spend on a freaking patio furniture that is kind of absurd yeah and i would never do that but we did see one table that was pretty slick uh so it's a expandable table and you pull it apart and the leaf pops up the leaf pops up yeah and then you just push it back together and then you pull it apart the leaf pops down i'd never seen that i've seen that for inside the house that was really cool but i've never seen one for patio furniture yeah it was really cool i don't know how much that table was probably five grand (laughs) right it's got built-in bluetooth and yeah all sorts of other absurdities i just again it's one of those things where we have some time we're not really doing much we we've gone to the park went on a hike yesterday yeah had the dogs let's just go run some errands and just see it is kind of nutty when you look at stuff and you go, 10 grand for patio furniture. Like certain numbers jump out at you and you're like, holy shit, that's either crazy expensive or on the flip side, you're like, okay, that's not terrible. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. There were these really nice chairs that had a little button and they reclined, right? Yeah. Like an airline button. Uh-huh. And I was like, those are pretty cool. <laughs> they are 700 and something bucks. A chair. And I was like, that's got to be chairs. Yeah. Chairs. No, Multiples. Like, chair. And the guy, let me check. That that seems steep. <laughs> and he comes back. He goes, no, that's that's it. That's per chair. And that comes with like an ottoman? No, no, no. Just, the, just the seat. Just the, yep. Yeah. And it's still fabric. So Jeanette and I and Grayson, we went up to Big Bear for Thanksgiving. And yeah. Our, our tradition has been for the past seven years. Is Did to, they have a $700 chair? No. But no, that's bullshit. It is $45 per person to ride a tube down the the. Yeah, I don't snow, understand that. Can't you just hillside. go to a snow bank? Well, Unfortunately, it's a little warm, so there weren't That's snow true. bakes available. So all they had was man-made snow at uh, two places. There's like Big Bear Snow Play, and then there's the Alpine Slide at Magic Mountain. So that Alpine Slide at Magic Mountain is the first place you see when you come yeah. to Big Bear. Yeah. Big Bear Snow Play is farther in town, and I actually prefer that one better because the hill is a little taller, a little longer of a run. But both places were 45 bucks a person to ride inner tubes basically down the hillside. Um, and thinking about it, okay, if you get a hundred people through, which is pretty easy, that's 4,500 bucks a day, a day yeah. minimum. Yeah. They've got, I don't know, maybe 10 employees across the entire facility, you know, supervising the arcades and the, the snack bar and all the other shit. So they're making money on it, but it's like 45 bucks a day to play in snow. And you're right. I mean, obviously if, if it was snowing we go to any local slope and and do it that way yep but i think that's what stood out to me was like disneyland is like a little more than twice that price and you get to go on all these you know rides not spirit farm single day admission is what i have no idea because i paid for the annual pass but i'm sure it's like 70 80 bucks oh yeah 50 bucks maybe yeah yeah. And here I am paying 45 bucks per person. So Grace and I, to go playing in the snow was $90. So what we did is... That's crazy. The, what they do is they put a zip tie around like a loop or around your shoelaces. And that zip tie signifies that you've signed the waiver. You've given up your rights to sue if you yeah, sure. get maimed. You could die. And then once you hand over money, they give you two adhesive decal passes. Yeah. And they take that, they peel off the decal and they wrap it around the zip tie and that's your proof of purchase and that's your pass for the day. It's weird. I guess they don't want people sharing zip ties. Yeah, I get it. Okay. So what Grace and I basically did is we went and played for an hour and a half, went back to the cabin, ate lunch and came back and played for another hour and a half. So we, we maximized our, our $90 expenditure to play in the snow, but did you have a snowball fight? No, because there wasn't enough snow to do it and because it was still relatively warm the yeah. snow was becoming icy uh, and nobody really wants to get hit by an ice clod upside I mean, the head maybe although there were a couple of patrons that deserved it that's what i'm saying maybe you should have like gotten some sweet sweet justice and that's the interesting thing about big bear so it's a, it's a local mountain community mm. and it's at 
6,000 feet elevation, 7,000 feet, depending on where you are in Big Bear. Mm -hmm. And so people all over San Diego County, Riverside County, LA County, Orange County. They have a lake. We'll all go up there. Yeah. Big Bear Lake. Yeah. And so it's, it's, you get a, a diverse crowd of people there. Tahoe adjacent. None of whom seem to know how to dress for oh, slightly dude. cold weather. None of them. And so you're seeing people in sweatpants and Crocs on the slopes. You're seeing people in like over the top ski outfits. It's all the people coming out from the day trips. Yes. Right. The are, day trip people are underdressed. Yeah. And then you got the people that are turning it into a vacation and they're overdressed. They've got the brand new ski bibs and the boots. Yeah. They got the snowboard to go binding. down the little hill. Yes. <laughs> And you're just like, what the hell? Like, Grace and I just had sneakers. We had jeans and like a jacket. And, and I you're think fine. I had a hoodie. Yeah. 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 Fine. Yeah. But I think the the people watching is is so fun just to see. You're like, what the hell are you wearing for just this? I mean, it's did you little... go into the village? Yes. There's we, some cool like little spots. That pizza joint's good. Yes, the mama sauce. Yeah. We were right next to it. We we did uh, the what was it beer rock or something fire rock burgers and brew or something. Oh yeah, the yeah, burger yeah, place, place right next door. Yeah. Um, so we did that actually on Friday. And so when we first got up to Big Bear, the weather was actually really comfortable. It was like daytime high of like low 60s, upper oh, 50s, nice. like almost too warm. Yeah, sure. For, for the mountains. And as we as we were there for the full week, it got colder and colder. So by Friday, we had lunch outdoors because we had the dog with us. And it was 42 degrees at like 1 32 o'clock yeah that's cold and it was getting colder yeah, as yeah. we were eating yeah and we were downtown because we wanted to hang around for the christmas tree lighting ceremony oh fun but then we said it's i'm cold now yeah yeah it's gonna get worse it's gonna get worse and that lighting ceremony is not for another like three hours right. so we said forget this and so we ended up going back to the cabin having some bomb leftover uh thanksgiving sandwiches okay and watching home alone did you enjoy your thanksgiving dinner yeah, we, we love our Thanksgiving tradition and the fact that we get to avoid... What did you make? Uh, we brought up a turkey breast because it was just the three of us. Yeah, so, yeah. So we had like a seven-pound turkey breast. Dude, it amazes me that turkeys have breasts that are that big. Yeah. We had a 12-pound turkey breast? breast. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. That's stupid. So we did like... A, it was like six and a change. It was like just under seven-pound turkey. Yeah. Um, we made stuffing. Uh, Jeanette made yams. Uh... We had mashed potatoes, green bean casserole I made. Nice. Um, we picked up a pie in town. And what so flavor pie? Apple pie. Okay. So it was one of those things where we didn't really know that there was You don't any... want spiced gourd? No. we Pumpkin was the only other option available. So anyways, we get into town on a Sunday. Yeah. Browsing through the phone and looking to see what's interesting nearby. We find a place called Pickles Pie Shop. I like it. And we sent it to uh, to Nick to yeah, yeah. harass him because he's anti-pickle pickle, anything. Which makes no sense. Even though this place has nothing to do with pickles other than maybe that's somebody's nickname. But there's no pickles on the menu Okay, at the pie shop. Got it. Um, but they were closed. They just wanted the alliteration. Yeah, yeah, probably. And they were closed on that following Monday. But on Tuesday, they'd be open. But they, were, they had a bunch of social media posts in the days prior saying, you must pre-order, must pre-order. We will only have a handful of... Um, pies Extras. each day yeah. to, to to pick up. So sure. we're like Tuesday morning. All right, the pie shop opens at nine. We're gonna get there before nine and get in line. Yeah, was there a line? There was a line. Okay. We were about the eighth, eighth or tenth or so because it was hard because there was groups of people yeah, in sure, line. Sure. In line, and so I don't know how many people in line have prepaid orders and how many people didn't, but they had like five different flavors. And apple pie was like the highest for Grayson. And I was like, I would have been fine with it. They, they had a mixed berry that I really wanted. Um, they had one that was called sweater weather that I really wanted. What was, what is that? It had like, it had like blueberry, it had ginger, it had mm. uh, caramel. It had a bunch of different like savory, sweet kind of flavor profiles to it. Okay. Um, and then of course they had uh, pumpkin pie, which yeah, yeah. was the bottom of the list. And so. It we, shouldn't exist. But We see people walk out and there's a guy walking out with like five pies. I'm like that if that asshole ordered five pies and took away from yeah because we found but out, he could have pre-ordered he could have yeah, yeah we found out the morning of they had 18 pies that were unclaimed what 18 that's, that's all it. that yeah, was yeah. it so he he took it down to 13 yes and so then we see uh they have a chalkboard yeah. inside and they raced one of the flavors i was like oh Fuck. no what flavor is gone now I don't. I think okay. it was uh, the mixed sweater berry. weather. Um, okay. Sweater weather was the first to go. I'm like, all right, sweet. They still have mixed berry. As we get closer to the line, mixed berry gets wiped off the list. Yeah. Fuck. There was 
by the time we got to the front of the line, there was just apple pie and pumpkin pie left. Mm -hmm. When we were at the front of the line, we could see the cart. There was one apple pie left. And so we got the last apple pie. Uh, all right. After that, it was just the spiced gourd pie yeah. that was left. And uh, when we turned around and walked out, there was still a line of maybe about 15 people behind us. All of them just getting spiced gourd. Possibly. Or they were or smart pre and they pre-ordered. Yeah. But, um, but now you know next year. We could pre-order. Pre -order. Yeah. yeah. And it was a great pie. And, of course, we knew that we picked it up on Tuesday. And we're like, there's no way we're eating all of this on Thanksgiving. So we started yeah. eating it Tuesday night. We had some Wednesday night. Oh, and then man. we finished it off on Thursday night. It was great. A week of pie. A week Did of pie. Did you have whipped cream? Uh, did well, we had whipped cream, but I, I just served it with a side of uh, a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Oh, I see. So, a la mode. Oh, yeah, that's what they call that. Yeah, which means on the pie. No, it doesn't. I don't know what the fuck. All on the means. side, <laughs> yeah. I have no idea with yeah. ice cream. Who knows? I, here's the thing Did you put cheese on it? Why the fuck? Would you I... know, that's the thing, right? No, Swiss or not Swiss cheese, cheddar cheese on apple pie. That's a thing. You've Where? never seen that at a no. diner? Oh, yeah. A la mode means stylish, fashionable, or topped with ice cream. Yeah, obviously. I don't know how those things are related. When I say, hey, man, you're all a mode in that outfit. Either I'm going to think you put ice cream on, it, on me. Or you're <laughs> stylish. Yeah, you need some ice cream on you, sir. Do French people say a la mode? I don't know. In French, the phrase a la mode is in the current fashion. Ooh. Or is a shortening of a la mode day, which means in the style of blank. That's weird. Huh. I did not know that. And but now I know it. I have never successfully actually scooped vanilla ice cream and placed it on top of the yeah, pie slice. it just slice. falls off. Right. So I don't even try to put it on top. Yeah, you just put it next to it. But when you Google search a la mode, you see these They're unrealistic perfect. expectations. So cheddar... On your pie, on your apple pie, is an option at a lot of diners. Like a yellow cheddar or yeah, white yeah, cheddar? Yeah, yellow cheddar. Melted? Or just like a cut by the, slice? By the, by the fact that the pie is warm, it melts. I've never had it. Have you had it? No. Then why it are you disgusting. talking so knowledgeably about it? <laughs> because I thought it was so gross, I had to know if that was real. I've Somebody told me it. about it. I think it's made up. I think you're full no, of shit. No, you can Google it. Put it in your Google machine. You have the power of the internet in your new iPhone 15. Let me type this in. Pro. Is Ryan full, full of shit? It's going to say yes. Oh, shit. Yeah. Likely. Ryan from Ryan's world is a little shit. He's the real oh, life that's Kylo. That kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. You are full of shit. Yes. Uh, we, had, we had seven people. So we had turkey tri-tip, we had Ooh. potatoes. Did we you had, grill the tri-tip? Yeah, I did. I marinated it and then threw it on the Weber. We smoked the turkey. Uh, we did uh, biscuits. We had salad. We had, oh man, so much food. It was so good. Everything was great. Cocktails and beers and it That's, was fun. That sounds delightful. But it was nice because it was a small get together. Yeah, yeah. We have friends that, that they had 17 people. Holy That's shit. That's too much. Yeah. It's like 16 too many. One, it's it's funny when you talk to people. It's like, oh, yeah, well, I've got to do this house, and i got to go to that place and do that thing. And yeah. it's just, that's one of the reasons why we enjoy getting away for Thanksgiving. Is it allows us to create our own tradition and sure. do our own thing. Sure. And it's like, yeah, okay, it's nice to be able to see the family. But I, it would just be like my dad and my stepbrothers or my, or my mom or something. And those are people we kind of run into all the time anyways. When it stinks for me because I only have Thursday, Friday off. Yeah. And I because I have to go to a physical building... Yeah, you have a commute. Yeah, there's no taking the week and getting a cabin or doing whatever. Yeah, well, which I, I would love to do. I took I took the three days off. I mean, I, I guess I could have worked remotely, but I mean, I'd been out of the country the prior two weeks. And I figured yeah. take oh, a break. Let me take a break. Let me spend some time with my family. Then right. you know, make up for the time that I was away. Right. Uh, Jeanette ended up actually working from the cabin uh, Monday through Wednesday, and we stayed at the same cabin we rented last year, which is cool. Which was nice because it had a loft upstairs with yeah. a. With like a 30 inch monitor, oh, webcam, nice. a cam, a oh, that's keyboard. Cool. A, it's already there. It's already there. Oh, that's cool. So she was able to like get to work yeah, yeah. relatively easy rather than just trying to do everything on a dining room table on right. a laptop. Yeah, yeah. She had a workstation. So that, no, that's that was cool. nice. I would like to, I don't know, I want to do a road trip for the Christmas to New Year. So I got to figure that out. We'll, we are looking at, so I, I got an email link on November, no, actually, no, September. I think September 7th, I think I got it. Was it's weirdly specific. A link to Casa Bonita. I could buy tickets. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Because the only way you could get 
tickets to right. Casa Bonita is to be on their emailing list. They'll send you a link. That link is good and for 90 days. And when are you able to buy it? Or what, what are the window? It's Well, it's 90 days out. I that, see. that link is live for 90 days. But the right now, if I check Casa Bonita, I'm trying to buy for the week after Christmas. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. But the farthest out I can book is December 16th. Oh, so you have to wait. So I have to wait. So I've emailed them saying, hey, because you can buy and then pay an extra $10 per ticket to then make it a changeable date. Yeah. But I'm like, if I just wait, will that date be available or should I buy a day now? Yeah, yeah. Pay an extra $30 to right. then change it. But my goal is to be able to go to Casa Bonita on Friday, December 29th in Denver, Colorado. That'd be cool. So I would literally travel to Denver with my family yeah, yeah. simply to see some cliff diving. No, I think that's great. <laughs> at Casa Bonita. I, if I was able to, I would go with you. And just, we've never really experienced Denver yeah. in the winter. So it'd be kind of fun to see what it's all about. I was thinking about going north. Okay. Uh, to the pole? No. Oh. No, like maybe to Portland or something. Oh, okay. Or, yeah. I don't know. Nowhere special, I guess. I guess you can get mail. You can pick up your mail. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> okay. It's been a while. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. We're trying to figure something out. And then I did something I've never done before. Is I took my niece, who's nine, for her yes. birthday, whale watching. Okay. But I have never, I've been on many boats. I've been in the ocean. I've done all that. I have never purposely gone whale, whale watching. watching. Where did you uh, depart? Out of Newport. Out of Newport. It's out of Balboa. Is it just a, a one hour thing, a two hour It was thing? a couple hours. Oh, really? It was like two and a half hours. It was pretty long. Is there a bar on the boat? There is. Okay. So there, but they have three versions. They have like the big boat with a couple hundred people. Yeah. They have the smaller boat with, with a couple hundred people. 35 people. <laughs> okay. And then they have a really tiny like Zodiac kind of thing with like a dozen, maybe 10 people. There's no bar on that one. No, no bar on that. We didn't go on that. We went on the 35 person boat. What, is the pricing very? It's, oh, yes. The smaller the boat, the more expensive? Correct. But we, why would you want the small capsize one? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It seemed bad. Yeah. But so we went on the... the 35 person boat. Because I was like, look, if we're going to go on a boat, I want to be able to actually see stuff. Right. And, not right. be crowded out. Exactly. Yeah. And so took her, we saw... Is it like 40 bucks a person or is it more? Mm, I have no idea what... I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. It was not, It's I, not cheap. I've never but I did have a $50 them, so. coupon. So oh, whatever. all right. Uh, but it was cool. So you go... And, you know, obviously you go out the harbor and we saw hundreds of dolphins. Dolphins are super common. Yeah. But what the guy was saying, they did this thing. They call it um, stampede. They had a dolphin stampede. Where, where they're all like. A bunch of them, yeah. Yeah, they're running and, you know, they're they're jumping out of the water and using all their energy. Apparently that really only happens when they're hunting something or chasing something down. And the guy said that was more rare to see than a whale. Oh, no way. I was like, that's super cool. So yeah. we saw that. Super awesome. It was so neat. Did you get pictures or video? Or you... I had pictures, had video. Then we get out, we see two humpbacks. Rad. So it was awesome. It was such a, it, the day on the water was perfect. The weather was perfect. All the sights were perfect. Yeah. Like, everything about that was so much fun. And I had never gone. Are you she wearing, had never been, obviously. Are you wearing like a life preserver the entire time? No. Or you, okay. You're just up on a boat. Yeah. And there's a, it's kind of a pontoony. Yeah. It's a twin hall thing and there's an upper deck and they had a VIP people, but it was cool. Cause I told the guy, the captain, I happened to run into him right before we left. And I was joking about, Oh, is the bar open? And he goes, yeah, we're about to open it. I go, Oh, there's really a bar. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't expect that. Yeah. Uh, and then was like, Oh, Hey, you know, we're here for her birthday. Um, and you could kind of see her through the window where yeah. I, from where I was standing. And I said, oh, her name's Cameron, whatever. And he's like, oh, cool. Okay. And then we get out and the dolphins are, and he goes, Cameron, you got to get up to the front. Go ahead. And like from the top. And yeah. she's like, how does he know my name? It, it was really cool. Like she loved it. And she had so much fun. Did you buy him a drink? No, <laughs> I did give him a tip. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Don't fall in. Oh, that was bad. It no, was. I gave him a monetary tip. <laughs> but it was cool. Like, for a thing that I've never done before. Was it something that, that it was awesome. your niece had wanted to do? Or was it just a it was. A, well, I tried it. No, it was for her birthday. So okay. I try to do different activities with kids. And I was like, this would be. We've gone to the aquarium, which is super cool. We could do that again. But I was like, man, whale watching would be super fun. Yeah. Let's just do that. And so I just. Hey, does this work? Date work? Yep. Okay, cool. Went and picked her up and we spent the whole day with her. It was fun. Yeah, we, we, and then we got Froyo. We went to do whale watching one time and we had tickets and we went and then something, it was canceled the day of, so they refunded our money. Oh, okay. And, we and then we never you didn't went go back. back. And we've seen whales in person, like unexpectedly. Like we were in Maui and you can look off and yeah, this was, you see a whale. And you see, you know, far off in the distance, you can yeah. see the whales. And then we were up uh, near Hearst Castle. There's a uh, a pier, 
uh, nearby, and there happened to be a little lagoon, and a, a whale breached right there. Oh, and cool. That, that was pretty random. Yeah. But those felt kind of off in the distance, kind of right. a remote right. uh, experience, because it didn't feel like you were right up with mm -hmm. the, the whale. How far would you think you were? Like oh, we were field? within, no, I mean, we were close. Like, the dolphins were everywhere around right, you. Right, right, that makes sense. Yeah, but no, the whale, like, he, oh, okay, I, I think I see it. Like, you could see the the, the breath. Yeah. And so we went in that direction. And you can see, like, where they punch a hole in the water. It's really cool. Oh, like, wow. you can actually see. The water you, kind of. Yeah, it's like a circle. And so we would get to that and, like, okay, everybody watch. And you see, oh, okay, he's right there. And you just keep getting closer. We were probably within 30 yards. That's pretty rad. Yeah, it was cool. And, we, and it didn't, they didn't breach. We saw two two of them. Yeah. Both of them humpbacks. Neither breached, but one of them did the whole, okay, come up, breathe, come up, breathe. And then you could tell it was going to dive and had its huge, the, Tail. the whole fluke out of the yeah. water. Oh, so cool, man. It was really, really cool. And then you had seafood afterwards. No, we had chicken. I, we went to Crack Shack. Oh, yeah. That's a good spot. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I like that place. I, uh, I don't know how to segue, but when I was, <laughs> when I, when I was in it. Japan, I ate whale. I've heard a few people tell me this. It's on the menu yes. uh, at a couple places. There are restaurants that serve it, and that's yep. like the entire menu. Yeah. I don't know what is classified as a whale. Like if it's a smaller animal. Oh, yeah. Like, what is it? Like a porpoise kind yeah, of thing, yeah. or is it like an orca? I have no idea. Right. I'd like to think it's not like Shamu, um, but I had whale tartare. Huh. And so, I mean, it's sushi, so obviously it's going to yeah, be yeah, yeah. rare anyways, or raw. Um, not bad, but I can't say that it tasted like whale. It just tasted like sushi. I went to, so I didn't make it all the way to Tuck, but it, in Tuck Toy Tuck, there's a restaurant that's, because it's Inuit. Yeah. There's a restaurant where they serve whale, and apparently it's like a destination for people. Yeah, and so it, I've been going to Japan for a number of years now, like multiple decades, and in my time in like Shibuya in the Tokyo area, I'd yeah. seen this restaurant and never managed to go in because one, it was really intended for Japanese locals. So it wasn't really like an English right, menu right. or anything. Like that. So I figured, okay, it's just beyond, beyond my ability. So no worries. And then I went to a sushi place and it was on the menu and I was like, I'm going to try that. And so I ordered, I'm trying to find a picture of it. It wasn't bad. Hmm. It was just... Um, I know somebody that's eaten dolphin, and they said it was delicious. I have not had dolphin. That was in Portugal. In this same trip, I, I also had um, more basashi, which is a uh, horse. Okay. And I also had um, raw chicken. Like chicken... Yeah, uh, so sashimi. I've seen the raw chicken thing, and I get it that it's supposed to be safer-ish, but I don't really understand. So here's the whale tatar. So it's basically oh, yeah. like raw... It's an interesting fishy. color. Yeah, it's, it's dark. It's like a beet red almost. Yeah, yeah. And then it's got egg yolk. A little, uh, little quail egg? Yeah, huh. right with it. And then it's got some green onions on top. Interesting. That was fine. Then uh, the basashi. This just, is the same restaurant. Same restaurant, I yeah. See. It, it was a sushi joint. And they had yeah, a couple yeah. of more traditional pieces. Like the one piece that I thought was really interesting is they had, I don't know what kind of fish it was, but... Skewered up. They basically filleted the left side of the fish and yep. the right side of the fish. And, and then you get the fish. You're supposed to eat the fish, too? And then you get the fish. No, the fish is just staring at you as you eat its left and right side. That's nice. So there's like a skewer through the fish tail yep. into like the, the gill behind it. So the, the fish is kind of curled up on itself. And then you have the left and right sides of the fish right there. And it's the, the skin has been scored with a knife. And it sounds gruesome, but in terms of like a sushi flavor it was quite nice yeah it looks good and it was more like it. sashimi than anything else because obviously right. there was no rice i had sushi a few days ago actually quite enjoy it i love sushi sushi as yeah. my nephew used to call it the uh the weirdest thing i had on the trip and it was only weird because i've never had it this way is we were at izakaya which is basically like a, a pub yeah a japanese pub where you get mostly f alcohol but they also serve like you know uh yakitori and other like finger foods and stuff like that was french fries you know, so I went to Izakaya in Korea. And eating French fries with chopsticks? Yeah, that's weird. Was really kind of weird. Why don't you just use your fingers? Because nobody else was. Because it's Japan and everybody uses chopsticks yeah. for everything. I did go to an Izakaya in Korea. Isn't that weird? Was it literally called like an Izakaya or did mm -hmm. it have a different name for it? That's literally what it was called. Oh. Yeah. 
and I had yakitori <laughs> because it's okay. So kind of like in Japan, it's hard to find restaurants necessarily, and they yeah. don't really have bars. Like there's stuff unless you're a local, yeah. you have no idea, and you have to get off the streets right to into the alleys and stuff to find this stuff. It was the only thing I could find that was open. What's okay, that? so this was a piece of sushi that I had that I had to have explained to me. This was stingray fin. Oh, okay. That and it's looks like burnt. fried. It's yeah. like a fried or grilled stingray fin. This one was interesting. A lot of this stuff, like with certain cuisines, you when you eat it, you go, okay, I know why people like this. Like if you've never had fried chicken and you take a bite of fried chicken, you're like, oh wow. Unless you're a jerk. Perhaps. Yeah. But there you know, there are some things when you eat, you're like, okay, I get this. I, I'm totally into this, whatever, you know, fondue, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Then there are other things you're like, I don't get why everybody's raving about this. Sure. It's just meh. A lot of Japanese food is kind of on that like it's split. A lot of stuff is like, oh my god, this is phenomenal. And other stuff is like, eh. why would somebody yeah. go through all the effort of you know, catching, preparing, cooking, whatever this thing is. I feel like a lot of it is just tradition. Probably. Yeah, that this is how we've done it. Trust me, you're supposed to like it. Yeah. Yeah. You really this this fermented soybean yeah. that looks like snot, this natto, this is this is what you want to be eating. I don't like natto. I have had it, but it's it is better with mustard. Like a spicy mustard. Yeah, because really. it hides the gross. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Of course. Well, you know what we should do? We should also dictate, or uh, we should stick to our tradition and say goodbye. Okay. But before Because now do, I want sushi. <laughs> you want to eat? Now- Even though we just had tacos. I know. We did meet up for birria. We, yeah. we, we pre-partied on this one. Yeah. Now, we are entering the holiday season. We are. And I'm not- I'm fine with it. Right? Yes. But do we want to continue the ungrown up gift exchange? We should. All right. What are we setting the terms at? $20 or less? 25? Let's do 25. 25. I feel like inflation. All right. 25 right? or less. Yeah. All right. And then we'll bring it wrapped. And then when do you want to exchange it? Uh, I don't know. When is our, I don't even know what our like so this, schedule would look like. This, this airs on November 29th. And so Ooh, then. Midweek. So we could do it on, I think the next time we get together would be December 10th which is will have to be early because I'm going to the Ducks game. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so we could either we could do it the 10th or possibly the 17th depending on our schedules. Yeah, and the 20 well, so far that would be all right. But all the, right. no, the 10th is fine. We'll just get together early, so we'll have to do it by then. All right. And then listeners can hear what random shit we've decided to get each other. Yeah. All right. Hopefully it's on. Good. Good hunt, luck. The hunt is good yeah, luck. the hunt is on. <laughs> You're going to need it. You're being hunted. Yeah. All right, sir. All right. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Ungrown Ups podcast. And for this, we apologize.